All right, are we ready? All right, we're off like a dirty shirt. So where are we going to start? I think we'll head down to First Avenue. I do see people, I just don't see as many as I would expect. That's a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. The crazies are uh, still trying to get their head on straight from last night. I just kind of like that riverfront area. Yeah, that's a good spot. It's away from the bars, it's a little quieter. Maybe give them some more one at once. Judgmental. No, we're not out. Of, we're not out here to be judgmental. We're here to tell everybody about the judgment of God. Did you know that the judgment of God is coming? That's right. Everybody's going to be judged by God. Is that good news for you? Or is the uh, news that God's going to judge your life, is that bad news for you? Now, if you're a holy saint of God, God's judgment, that's good news. That's good news. But if you're a sinner, if you're a hell-bound sinner, like a drunkard, well, that God's judgment is going to be bad news for you. But the good news, the really, really good news is you can be born again. You don't have to die a drunkard. You don't have to die a sinner. You don't have to die a cigarette smoker. You don't have to die under the anger and wrath and the judgment of God. No, there's good news. There's good news. You can be born again. You remember Jesus? Jesus said, you must be born again. You remember that? I bet there's some people out here that have uh, gone to church. There might even be some people out here that have read the Bible. You remember when Jesus said you must be born again? Oh yes, have you been born again? Have you been made a new creature in Christ? Do you have a question, sir? Here's one for you. Ready? You got one for me? Hey, what are you Are you going to praise the Lord? The Lord that gave you your breath. The Lord that gave you your mind. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord with your singing. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. They're not being closed-minded. Well, that's a shame. Some people are being closed-minded today. But we're out here to appeal to the open-minded people. People that are open to the things of God. Are you open to the things of God, the thoughts of God, the statutes of God? Jesus said to repent. That means stop your sinning. That's what Jesus meant. Jesus said to repent, you know. Jesus said to stop your sinning. That's right, if you get born again, you don't have to be a sinner anymore. Isn't that good news that you don't have to be a drunk? That's right, you can be born again. You don't have to be a cigarette smoker. You don't have to be a fornicator. You can become a holy saint of God through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. See, God is graceful, God is merciful, and God is long-suffering. That's why God doesn't throw people into hell the very first time they sin, even though they deserve it. God is merciful and long-suffering, and He's even given you today that you might be born again. Turn to Him. Turn from the wicked things of this world. See, this world is perishing. Most people wonder about that. What's wrong with this world? Why is this world such a mess? Well, this world is falling apart. And if you have your heart set on the things of the world, well, you're going to be judged with this wicked world. You need to have your mind on the things of God. You need to have your mind on the things of heaven. That's right, the things of the Lord. Have you read the scripture today? Have you read your holy Bible today that you may know the things of the Lord? Did you know that the Bible says not to force religion? What Bible is that? What, what Bible is that? Well, if we don't want to hear it, that's kind of forceful, so have a good day. Hey, Jesus said, preach it from the housetops. Hallelujah. Preach it to every creature. Did you know Jesus came to abolish religion? Hey, do you guys want to see Do you have a chapter and verse for that, sir? 
Sir. Is that in the Bible or are you making that up? Sir. Did you know that Jesus came to abolish religion? What Jesus are you talking about? Jesus Christ. There's a lot of fake ones. Are you talking about the Jesus of the Bible? I don't think you're talking about the Jesus of the Bible. I think you're talking about the fake Jesus of the American church. See, there's a lot of fake, phony, and fraudulent uh, ideas and uh, idols in our nation today. Some people, some people even call their idol Jesus. Did you know that? See, there's a real Jesus of the Bible, and then there's a fake Jesus that people want to say, well, he's not going to judge me. Jesus isn't judgmental. Jesus doesn't hate anything. See, that's the fake Jesus of the American church. That's right. There's plenty of fake Jesus, but we're not here to preach the real Jesus. Hallelujah. The Jesus of the Holy Scripture. The Jesus of the King James Bible. Not the Jesus of the Catholic Church. Not the Jesus of Mormonism. We're not out here to pre the, preach the fake Jesus of the Jehovah's Witnesses. We're out here to preach the real Jesus. The Creator Jesus. The Judge Jesus. Oh yes, we're out here to preach the Jesus that's going to judge your life. You know why he's going to judge your life? Because he created you. Jesus created the universe. Jesus created you. And he's going to judge your life. So when Jesus judges your life, is he going to judge you holy? Or is he going to judge you as a sinner? Which is it going to be? See, if Jesus judges you as a sinner, he's going to cast you into the garbage dump of the universe. The Bible calls that hell. That's where all the wicked, God-hating sinners go. They go to the garbage dump of the universe called hell. And truth be told, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means everybody deserves hell. But, hallelujah, nobody has to go. Nobody has to go to hell because Jesus made a way through repentance, through trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross, you can be born again. See, everybody deserves hell, but you don't have to get what you deserve. You can get what you don't deserve. See, when you die... God is going to judge you. When you die, God is going to judge your life. Are you going to be judged a holy saint of God? Are you going to be judged as a heaven-bound saint when you die? Or are you going to be judged as a hell-bound sinner when you die? Oh, you don't have to die as a hell-bound sinner. Everybody has the opportunity to become a heaven-bound saint. That's right. People, people like the term inclusiveness today. Well, everybody can be included into heaven. However, if you choose to love your sin, commit your sin, live in your sin, and you die in your sin, oh, you have excluded yourself. If you die in your sin, you have excluded yourself. If you die as a drunkard, you've excluded yourself from heaven. You've proven that you're a sin-loving God-hater. And some people like to celebrate their sin. When you talk about sin like homosexuality, oh, some people, they have their pride. They say, oh, I'm glad I'm a homosexual. Well, then you're going to get what you deserve. But if you repent from your sin, if you're born again, if you become a new creature in Christ, hallelujah, you can get what you do not deserve. You can get a mansion in heaven, don't you know? Jesus is building mansions in heaven right now for all of his holy saints. Is Jesus building a mansion for you? Are you one of his holy saints? Or are you a hell-bound sinner? Loving your wickedness. You know, if you love your drunkenness, if you love your fornication, if you love your homosexuality, well, you've excluded yourself from heaven. But you can be born again. You can have all your sins forgiven, but you must repent. That's what Jesus said. You remember Jesus of the Bible? Jesus of the Holy Scripture? Jesus, the Son of God, said you must repent from your sin. That means stop your sinning. Knock off your sinning. Stop being a God-hating sin lover. Start being a sin-hating God. See, God hates sin. 
Do you hate sin? Are you like God hating sin? God hates sin. Like drunkenness. Like lust. Oh, there's a lot of people that love their lust. God hates lust. You should hate it too. You should be like God. Lusting is disgusting. God knows that. You should know it too. Pornography, drunkenness, lying, stealing. Oh, when you break your promises. So many people today, they make their promises. They say, oh, I'll marry you forever. I'll be with you for all of my life. I'll be your husband. I'll be your wife for the rest of my life. And what happens? Lie, broken promise, and another sin racked up on your debt. What a shame. What a shame when all you had to do is keep your promise. God, God keeps his promises, you know. And God has promised that he's going to judge the wicked. That's right. God said he's going to judge the wicked. Some people, they wonder, well, when is justice going to be served? You know, now that we have Trump in the White House, people say, well, maybe justice will be served under Trump. I wouldn't hold my breath. Some people think, hey, if we had Hillary in the White House, maybe justice would be served. I wouldn't uh, hold my breath then either. But hey, justice will be served. At the end of time, there's going to be Judgment Day. And justice is going to be served on Judgment Day by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is judge. Jesus Christ is reigning on Judgment Day. And what is he going to judge on you today? Looks like the festival is across the river, on the other side of the river. Okay, where you want to go? I wasn't planning for that. I'm sorry. You, you want to walk up to the edge here and get a good look and then maybe go around? Yeah, we'll, we'll, go, take, we'll go walk over there and take a look. Yeah. For this to change. Man, it looks like there's a lot of people lined up there. Okay. See, Jesus expects you to be sober-minded. Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all of your mind. Are you loving Jesus with all of your mind? Or are you only loving your own selfish pleasure? <laughs> Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Are you loving Jesus with all of your mind? The Bible says to be sober-minded. Sober-minded. So if you're knocking back your ice-cold beer, you're not being sober-minded. If you're getting drunk, you're not loving the Lord your God with all of your mind. Like Jesus said, you are breaking the greatest commandment. When you are getting drunk, when you are getting high, you are breaking the greatest commandment. Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all of your mind. Jesus Christ is coming back, folks. Jesus Christ is coming back. The Bible says, uh, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is coming back in flaming fire. Yeah. To bring vengeance. Yep, that's the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Um, you can have your fake news Bible, the FNV, or you can have the KJV Bible, preferably Holy Bible, where it says that Jesus Christ is coming back in flaming fire to bring vengeance upon those that know not God and obey not the gospel. That's sinners. Uh, sinners uh, go to hell. Christians go to heaven. Real simple. Hang on. Read this sign right here. Due to flooding, move to Nissan Stadium. Old school barbecue. Nissan yeah. Stadium. Well, we have a different angle now that we can see more of the ground. I think it's that building blocking it. Yep. And then I just I wish I would have looked at like did you happen to see how many people it was expecting? I can look. Yeah, let me look at that. Look at that. Blow that shit. Yeah, blow it. What's your name, sir? I'm Rodney. Rodney? Yeah. Rodney. Uh, you would have died today, Rodney. Uh, if you had to face God, would you be innocent or guilty before? 
I don't know. I ain't down to date. You could, I mean, God I'm could be I'm not down to fucking date. Well, God could require our lives at any time. That's what the Bible says. Yeah, I'm not down to date. The Bible says that all souls are mine, saith the Lord. That's what the Bible says. So nobody knows, nobody ever plans on dying. You know, we don't plan on dying, but the Bible does say that it's. I'm just, I'm just trying to go to jail. Okay. That's, all right, that's, that's all. That's good. Can I get a damn mat? I, 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 I'm homeless. I, I need, I need, I need a damn rug. I can sleep on that shit. You need a what? Some sleep on. Something to sleep on. You don't want to yeah. sleep on that. That's the holy word of God. Those are Bible verses. Sleep on that. You, you need that in your heart. You don't need it under your back. You need that in your heart. Can I get one? Well, thank yes you. Yes or no? All right. All right. Have a blessed day. You too, buddy. Hey. Make sure you read that, man. It's good information I, I, on there for you. You think right? I got it for nothing? I'm going to read it. Right. Me? That's good. Amen. That's good. God bless you, man. Uh, hey, I'm glad. What's your name? Marvin. Let's like God because I love him. That's good. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. It's John 14, 15. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yeah. He said that shit. I like that, man. It's a really good size. Did I tell you my wife helped me design it? Oh, really? No, you didn't tell me that. Yeah, yeah. I had some, uh, well, I made a Facebook post one day and asked for some, uh, you know, like lukewarm church rebuke verses. So we'll put some of those together, and I've got a couple of verses, and me and my wife talked about them, and got rid of one, and then we got, uh, I forget which one we decided on, and then we, you know, we decided on what to emphasize, and what to color and underline and stuff, and went back and forth with preaching gear a couple of times, made it up. Yo, it's good. Praise the Lord. All right, so I guess we'll head on over. Uh, let's walk on the outside. Time to think about where you're going to spend eternity, folks. Time to think about Jesus today. Amen. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 20. 
7 if you want to follow along in your Bible apps. Uh, if you don't have a Bible app, I encourage you today to download a King James Version Bible app. Uh, most of my content comes from that Bible. Uh, the same Bible that Donald Trump put his hand on when he swore into office. That's right, Donald Trump, Obama, all the past presidents put their hand on the King James Bible and swore into office. Many people say, well, we're all sinners. Well, the Bible doesn't support that. The Bible says there's faith. The Bible says, uh, Jesus said that um, all of heavenly judges were the one sinner that repents versus the 99 that did not gain repentance. That will tell you right there that there's 99 people that Jesus is talking about that did not gain repentance. Amen. But Jesus said that in works, you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Right. So we encourage you folks today to come out and talk to us today and ask us some questions about the Bible. We'll take your Bible questions down here on, in the Bible Belt here in Nashville, Tennessee today. Uh, we came down here uh, to hang out with sinners just like Jesus did. Uh, Jesus Christ hung out with sinners, and Jesus Christ called them to repentance. If it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. Houston, Texas is being judged by God with a flood because of how wickedness the flooding is going on in Houston. Houston is the place of the largest gay pride parade. It's no wonder God flooded it. And Jesus Christ is coming back in flaming fire, folks. Jesus Christ is coming back in flaming fire to bring vengeance upon those that know not God and obey not the gospel. This is in the Bible, folks. I'm quoting New Testament. This is not even Old Testament. Hey, that's what they said to Jesus. They said he was crazy. So we're being like Jesus. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is going to execute. He's going to have angels bind sinners up and uh, cast them into the lake that burns with fire. Time to get right with God. Time to turn to Jesus. Jesus can set you free, you know. In fact, uh, we come down here uh, to talk about the real version of grace. Uh, we want to bring grace down to Nashville today, the grace of God that has appeared unto all men. And I'll even sing uh, one bar for you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. Cast into the lake of fire. 
Jesus said, wide is the road and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many are there on it, but narrow and difficult are the way that leads to everlasting life. There's only one way, narrow, straight and narrow is the road that leads to everlasting life, and only a few will find it. Time to stop being a drunkard and a reveler. Time to stop being a homosexual and a pot smoker, masturbator. Time to get right with God. Jesus is going to judge you one day. Jesus is going to judge you. Are you ready? He'll offer you forgiveness if you repent. No repentance equals no forgiveness. God is this loving. is the real news. Yes, this is very loving. God is love. I love you. Everyone. Yeah, and Jesus everyone is, God is also going to judge you. Hey. God judging everybody too. God is going to judge homos and throw them in the hell. They're going to get it in the end. You don't seem very loving, Homos sir. We'll get it in the end. Yeah. Let's go to the end. 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 let us go we're just out here to love on people. To get on the Not be angry. Here. Don't be angry. We love you enough down here in Nashville to tell you the truth. And we speak the truth in love. Because the Bible I tells us to. I coming down here today. The Holy Ghost sent us What's down that? here today. Because the tell Holy me. Ghost was yeah, sent by Jesus no Christ to convince people of Right. You know who Paul was talking about? Talking to in the book of Don't Galatians? You know who he was talking to? He was talking to born-again Christians. People who had been already repented from their sin. Okay? He wasn't talking to a bunch of sinners. He was talking to people that were holy saints of God. So that was for them. Oh, sure it does. Sure. See, Jesus said to judge righteous judgment. Okay? And it's righteous because the Bible says that all sinners are going to hell. You know, if you're a drunkard, you're going to hell. If you're a murderer, you're going... You know, that, that's what you deserve anyway. You, you don't have to. Right. The Bible says that all have sinned. You, you're right. The Bible says that all have sinned come short of the glory of God. Okay? That's why you need to be born again. You need to trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross to get rid of God's anger and wrath over your life for your sin. See, you don't, everybody has sinned, but nobody has to sin. It's always your choice. Somebody gets drunk, they chose to do it. Somebody steals something, it's their choice. We have, we have. Right, we all used to be sinners. So, but when we got born again, see, now, now, basically, we love what God loves and we hate what God hates. See, God hates uh, drunkenness, you know, so we should hate drunkenness. We should, we should, hang on, I'm answering her question. So, you see what I'm saying? We used to be, we used to be sinners. I used to love to sin. I used to love to get drunk. I used to love to look at pornography. I used to love my sin. But when I got born again and dwelled with the Holy Ghost, now I love what God loves and hate what God hates. I still have a choice. You know, I could choose to sin, but I don't have to. Yeah. And oh yeah, we're not stopping anybody. We're we're just bringing out ideas. That's all. We're just bringing out our ideas. When you say homosexuals will burn, and it's not a choice. You didn't choose straight. I choose it every day. Of course, I choose. I, I could have homosex with somebody if I wanted to. No. No. I could fornicate if I wanted to. No, it is an attraction. You cannot. Would you accept that from a pedophile? You wouldn't accept that from a pedophile. No, but it's not the same thing. It's because sexual I could perversion. Not, Either I could way, not. it's sexual Listen perversion. Listen to me. I could not choose to have sex with a man because I am not attracted to men. It would not work. It is not a choice. It doesn't work that way. If it did, then I could choose that. God made you be... to be a husband and a father. No. Okay. No. God made men God to be husbands everyone. and fathers. God loves everyone. Right, God but the problem, the, the problem is that sinners hate God. When That's... you don't obey, matter of fact, I, I well, even so put it on my me? banner right here. Are you telling me I put that you it on my never, banner. ever? throughout the entirety of the Bible, front to back, commit a sin? Is that what no, that's you? what I was telling her. I used to love the now, sin. Now, now. Now I choose not to sin. I don't get you drunk don't anymore. You possibly avoid every rule and parable. Hey, every sin is a choice. You can choose not to sin. Why are you shoving down your throat? So why are you shoving down your throat? 
bringing it down everybody else. Yeah. Well, they're just walking by. We're just making it available. No, this Yeah. But see, if the word of God gets down, gets in your system, that can save your soul. Well, you know. See, everybody needs the word of God. That's the only way to be saved. I don't. I, I, that that is not okay. If they don't get born again, if they don't, they deserve to, I, I deserve to go to hell. Yes, everybody. That's what the Bible says. But the Bible also says that nobody has to go to hell. Nobody. You, you need to repent from your sin. That means turn from it. You know. And when you get born again, you're going to get the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. That's going to help you live the way. Right. And she is one of the nicest people I know. Right. And if but our God is a loving God, sin. she will not go to hell. Well, God because hates she is a nicer person than her. Well, that's, we're out here loving our neighbor. We're warning people. Why is it a sin to love everybody? Well, there's nothing wrong with loving everybody, but if you have sex with everybody, that's a problem. Because you're loving no, not set. only that, you know what? How have, many having, priests are out here screwing little kids? That's the Roman Catholic Church. They're wicked. They're one of the worst religious organizations on the planet. I've seen that. Exactly. They're just like the Catholics. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with being Catholic. There's nothing wrong with being Buddhist. There's nothing wrong with being well, according to who? According to who? If somebody is following a belief system that makes them a better person and makes the world a brighter place, then God should see that in life. But everybody's going to be judged by God's standards, not by y'all. You don't know God. I do. I do know God. No. I do know God. You know. You're so judgmental. You you know what is told. How can you judge that I don't know God? You are. You know what's told. God. And no, I know what's it. written in his everyone, holy scripture. Everyone has their own individual perception of God. No, no, no. It's all written in the Bible. That gets rid of individual perception. If you, the okay, holy Bible is this the me. mind of God. Do this for me. Go into a church and ask someone what their individual relationship with God is. Everyone is going to say God is something different. You know, what, you know what the Bible says the church is? If you read the Bible, do you know what the Bible will say the church is? It's the Christians. It's the people. We're the church. These buildings around here, those are pagan temples. Those church buildings are pagan temples. They got no basis in Scripture. Nowhere does the Bible say build a big, huge, you know, church building. It also right, says, but it's wrong. But they're wrong. It also says that it brings right, but what's right in God's eyes? Well, okay. Not, those are, why? Those just because you say it's not okay? You are being incredibly judgmental. You are standing on a pile. If you're God, and you are saying you are judgmental, sir. You are judgmental, sir. But listen to the things he is saying. You are extremely. Judgment. Yes, we are judgmental. We're out here to okay, judge. You That's right. We're out here to be judgmental. We're obeying the Bible. Oh yeah, he's got a whole day called Judgment Day. To judge in the Bible. Right. And, and who is Jesus in uh, Matthew chapter seven? Who was he talking to when he says, "Judge not, lest ye be judged"? He was. He was talking to the religious hypocrites. He was talking to the religious hypocrites. Okay. But Jesus said they're judged righteously in. Uh, I think it was John 7, 24. The Apostle Paul, he said that a spiritual man judges all things and by no man is he judged. So Christians are commanded to judge. Religious hypocrites are commanded not to judge. Isn't that people like you make everybody else feel like shit? Yeah, well, if you're guilty of sin, you should feel bad. And you should feel if bad too. If you're sinning against God, you should feel bad. You should be terrified if you're sinning against God because you're hell bound. That's the warning. Yeah, you need to repent, man. Get rid of that filthy mouth. Get washed up with some soap. Holy soap. Holy soap, right. Time to turn to Jesus Christ. I know some of you might have went to church today and you might have heard the fake news there. So we came here today to tell you the real news. This is Real News Network, RNN. The real news, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have some really good news for you folks today. Did you know that you could stop sinning? Did you know you don't have to sin? And when Jesus returns, it's going to be a bloodbath. Only it's not going to be his blood that's spilled this time. It's going to be the wicked. He's going to trample them down with the, like the great Samaritan that they are. Jesus Christ is coming back in flaming fire, folks, in vengeance, in fury. The Bible describes him in the book of Revelation 
was a man with the eyes that flame like a fire. And his hair is white as wool. And out of his mouth comes a two-edged sword, which is his word, to slay the wicked. In the book of Malachi, it says that the day of the Lord burns like an oven. The day of the Lord is burning like an oven. And all the proud, it says, and all the wicked shall be burned up on that day. He will leave neither root nor branch. God so loved the world, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. God so loved the world, he's coming back in flaming fire to bring vengeance upon those that know not God and obey not the gospel. Praise the Lord. God, this you're talking about that. a lot of God. Right? No, we're talking about the God of the Bible, the real God, the only Bible real God. Wasn't written by God. It was written by His holy saints. The Bible is written by His holy saints, holy men of God. And Jesus gonna have a God to have a baby by a woman. Give me a break. God's awesome, isn't He? God's awesome, isn't He? Oh yes, He's the only way. Jesus is the only way. Yes, He did. A virgin woman at that. A virgin woman at that. Can you believe it? No. That's the truth. Well, that's the truth. It takes faith, though. There have been 16 people claiming they were Jesus that had a baby by a woman down in the Yep. That's the miracle of God. But hey, he's the guy that created the whole universe out of nothing. Why would he have to have a baby by a woman? Because the only way to atone for our sin was through the shedding of blood of a perfect man. Well, you can, though. By the Jesus said to go and sin no more. He told that to two people. Go and sin no more. Jesus tells that to everybody. I ain't heard Jesus say none of these goddamn oh, it's, preachers. It's written in the Bible. Day. It's written in the Holy yeah, Scriptures. Man wrote that shit. Oh no, yeah, but they were under they were under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. I didn't write none of it. They wrote Jesus exactly. Write none. They wrote down the mind of God in the King James Bible. Got man's fingerprints all over. The King James Bible is the the mind of God for us today. Well, he didn't do it. Room for what he said his commission. He did it. Room for the stuff. He come back with a little yeah, the King James Bible. You gotta believe it. I ain't gotta believe nothing. I'll tell you like I can tell my brother. I ain't gotta believe nothing. Why not? That's the only thing that can save your soul. I ain't got no soul. You already admitted you already admitted you're a sinner. I ain't got no soul. You ain't got no soul. Yes, you do. I'm set up in church, get all this money and buy airplanes and leave half of the folks poor. Yep. yep. Yeah, they're a bunch of fakers. Don't believe those liars. Don't believe those liars in the church buildings. Huh? Don't believe those liars in the church buildings. They're just after your money. I know. Yeah, but God wants your soul. God, God wants to clean you up. God wants to clean you up. See, that body is just on loan. That body only, you know, you just have that for a little while. That body's going to wear out, but your soul's going to go on forever. Yeah, most racist. Some of most racist folks I know. What's that? Some of the Jesus folks, most racist folks I know. Well, yeah, they're liars. They're not real Christians. If they're real Christians, they would understand that you got brown skin and I got brown skin. You know what I'm saying? We all came from Noah after the flood. There, there ain't anybody that uh, talks about race, different races, well, they're just a racist. Because race, yeah, that's, right. a, that's a fake uh, news. Yeah, they got word. right to say what you believe. I have to have the same right. But right, believe, right. I, like I tell my brother, believe me, they ain't going to make it true. Believe what you want to believe. Well, there's, there's things that are true and things that are false. And you want to believe the truth, don't you? You don't want to believe a lie. No, it's really true. If I, if not true, if I don't believe it. I ain't got much. What I believe ain't got much to do with what you God decides what's true. God created the whole universe. He decides what's true. Huh? You know, God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. God wants everybody to be saved. That's why we're out here. That's why we're out here. According to what you say, everybody ain't going to be saved. Well, according to what the Bible says. I'm sure he wouldn't have to die to save nobody. I have died to save my country when I was in the military. They said you have to die to save my team. You were in the military? Yeah. I was in the military too. I was in the submarine force for 20 years. 
Where, to, where were you stationed? Well, I was stationed in Charleston, South Carolina, Kings Bay, Georgia, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, you know, Andrews Air Force Base, Maryland one time. So yeah, but you know, this, 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 this country, even though we defended it, we defended our lives in the military, God's going to judge it. This is a wicked country, you've got to admit it. All this abortion, all, all the racism. That's how I know they'd make up stuff like that, they're wicked. No, this is from God. This is made from the Bible. The Bible ain't God's word. I've been writing. So what, do you, what do you think is God's word? I don't know. Well, I, I, tell you, I know that the Bible is God's word. I know it. I believe what I said, but do you really know? I don't think so. You gotta believe the truth. There, there's a million lies, there's only one truth. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one can come unto the Father but by me. That's what Jesus said. Jesus say nothing. Oh, it's all written. It's been written for thousands of years. Somebody wrote it, but didn't say it. I don't know. Yeah, but it's true. It's true. That's how powerful God is. He can even write something down in a book and preserve it. It's been written in English for over 400 years. Unchained. Praise the Lord. Yeah. If there ain't nothing else here, we'll take what's here. What's that? When there ain't nothing else here, we'll take what's here. So the Bible's here, we'll take it, but it ain't. God, God's going to destroy all this. God's going to destroy all this world. He's going to make a new world, but only His holy saints are going to be in the new world. So the world is going to destroy everybody with you. We all going to die. That's right. That's right. The Bible, and the Bible agrees with that. See? See, the Bible says that, and what you said is true. We knew that before they wrote the Bible, didn't they? Yeah. Before they wrote it, because God made it true. God made it so everybody died. Yeah. We knew what that was. Nobody had to write the book. Somebody going to die for the Lord. The Bible says uh, everybody's going to die and everybody's going to be judged. That's what's going to happen. But you've got to be judged righteous. you got to be born again. Otherwise, you're in trouble. I don't know what's going to happen when I leave here. I don't see nobody else. They talk, they talk about what they believe. That's what we're doing. And that's believing is okay, but do you really know? Oh, I know. I believe it and I know it. You know why? Because when I, when I read the Bible, God is there. The Holy Ghost is in me. God is with God. The Holy Ghost is there confirming to me that the Bible is true. Oh, yeah. his, his holy men wrote it. You know, man, paper with man, ink, man. Can reduce God to somebody that can't talk no more. Oh, yeah. So I'm saying. The Bible says go out and preach the gospel to every creature. That's what Jesus said. That's what I'm here doing. Jesus has got to send all workers over the equity into the lake of fire. What's that? God didn't write it. Hitting his holy men. Like, like, when, like when we quote the Bible, it's true. Well, when the holy saints of God wrote the Bible, you know, it's true. If you got to have something to believe, I guess it ain't too bad to believe it. I don't know. I don't know. It's called death and hell. We're just Christians, just Bible-believing Christians coming out preaching the gospel like Jesus tells us to do. I see. Yeah. So y'all not affiliated with any kind of church or anything? No. Uh -uh. No. See, the Bible just says that Christians are the church. Uh -huh. You know, it never says to build a big building. You know, Jesus never even said go to oh, church. Just you three? Well, yeah, we meet together on social media, come out here and love our neighbors here in Nashville, preaching the gospel. Yeah. Now, we have other friends we preach with from time to time. But... Travel around quite a bit? Uh, some of these guys do. I mostly just come up here to Nashville. Are you a Nashville native? No, no. I grew up in New York. Okay. But I retired from the Navy uh, down, uh, near Nashville. So. Yeah, I've lived here all my life. Yeah. Okay. All yeah, right. I got, I got uh, you know, religion. It's just like a sticking point for me because I've often been people try to cram it down my throat when I was a kid. Right. When you look, all I ever heard was your your God's good. You're not and try harder. And so just no, no, no. That's not that. the message of the I Bible. That. That's, that's fake. That's what I heard. I may have said something there, but that's what I heard. No, you got to get God's word from the King James Bible. Well, I don't go for that. So that's just a book. To What's me. that? That's just a book to me. 
movie. That's not anything. Have you, know, you ever read it? Yeah, I have. Yeah. You read? Yeah. I read the New International Version and the King James. Oh no, that's it's that, just a book. That's that's from the Vatican, the NIV, and all that other garbage. See, see, it was written perfect in 1611, and then the devil's been trying to mess with it ever since. Okay, but it's still but it's still here today. Unchained. I got a copy right here. As a matter of fact. I don't think the greatest been unchanged. What, what changes do you think are in it? I'm sorry. What changes do you think are in the King James Bible? I don't tell it. Copy it, copy it, copy it. Copied it, copied it. Really oh, yeah, but copies. they got photocopies of original ones, and it still matches. The only thing, the major change was the font. They went from Gothic font to Roman font. But hey, you can you can get you can look online. You can even buy a photocopy of the original King James Bible and compare it with the uh, Cambridge King James Bible today. Photoshop and all that. I'm not sure. I believe that. Right. Do you believe in God at all? Sir? Do you believe in God at all? Yeah, I believe in God, yeah. Do you, is your God powerful? Yeah. Can he do anything he wants? Yes. Could he preserve his words in a book? No, probably not. So he's not that powerful and not that sovereign to preserve his words in a book? Well, that's just a matter of opinion. That's, I mean, that's, well, that's your opinion, but, you're, right. but you you got a fake God, though. Your, 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 your idea of God is wrong. If he, if he can't preserve his words in a book... Okay, well, we'll find out on Judgment Day. Yeah, I'm sure we will. When's it coming? Well, it's, it's been appointed to man once to die. Everybody's going to be judged. Oh, man, that's fucking money. That's right. Right? It's coming. Yeah, see, when people start telling me I better get their brand of religion while they start getting No, not out, my brand of religion. religion. Not my I brand. Yeah, not the other. I'm just telling you to read, believe, and obey the Bible. Yeah, I don't believe the Bible. That's it. That's all we do. That's our message. Jesus said to uh, go and sin no more. You remember that? You say you read it. Yeah. How many people? He told two people, go and sin no more. It's called religion. Open for the masses. What do you think about this? Well, we still have that going on today. Like the Roman Catholic Church, that's religion for the mad. Oh, hey, that's the that's the biggest uh, pagan temple right down there, the Bridgestone Arena. People go in there, they, they worship their hockey. You know, they, they, yeah, they, they worship all kinds of... They're smarter than that. Sure, they don't go some fools up there and worship I don't know. You see how people act when it comes to hockey around here? Oh, that's worship. That's worship. They buy the clothes. They spend the money. I'll pray for you. Well, God doesn't hear the prayers of sinners. That's what the Bible says. That Bible you, you say you read? He doesn't Bible hear the bullshit. prayers. The Bible's bullshit. It's just a word that somebody put together. It don't mean a fucking thing. See, and you're a potty mouth, too. See, that, that proves you have a wicked heart. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks.
is stupid. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, pay hey, me like you fall. says that Jesus is building us mansions in heaven well, he for his holy knows. saints. He huh? Got, he got a for, the day is the day is yeah. Yeah. for his holy saints. Oh yeah, there's going to be work for it to do in heaven. Huh? Oh, it's not going to be grievous work like on this earth. It's not going to be, it's not going to be a, a you know, waste of time work like we got around here. Well, God's not going to force anybody into heaven. God, God's not going to make you go there. I just told some of the slaves the bottom here so you're going to a place where Jesus is. And you get on this ship named Jesus. Oh. And then when they got here, they started start turning the sun, steal away. Steal away home to do when get back on their boat. Right? See, see, the devil's been blaspheming Jesus' name all along. Well, furthermore, uh, that's why you got to read the King James Bible. The truth is in the King James Bible. I don't know about you can't go wrong. That's the that's the that's the true north of God's word. The Holy Scripture. I don't see nobody sing to you. So. What's that? Yeah, I don't know nobody ever seen to you. Sing to you? Ever seen him? Oh, seen him? Seen Jesus? Well, Jesus told. Uh, one of his apostles, uh, Thomas, he, he said it was good that he saw him and believed, but even more blessed are the people that don't see Jesus and believe. Uh, old Thomas had a point, man. You gotta, you can't, somebody come up and grab me. How are you going to believe one thing? I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. yeah the, the only way you can please God is through faith. Well, he's written it down in the Bible. He made it available for you. Huh? Well, do you believe? Do you believe in a God? Do you believe there is a God? I believe there's something called God. Everything I see, but do I know? Or do I have to know? I don't have to know. I ain't nothing I can do about it. You, you need to love and serve Him. You need to love and serve your Creator. You can be nice to people. Yeah. You really serve God? I'm not sure. Sure. I mean, one of the most loving things you can do for people is warn them about something that's going to hurt them. That's a, well, that's a loving thing, I, thing to do to warn people. Scared the hell out of them. So if I got to do right because I'm scared, I don't need to get no credit for doing it's, it's not about It's not about being scared. It's not about being scared. It's about giving them a warning and, and telling people what God expects of them. I want to do right because the right thing to do. By whose opinion? My opinion? You're going to do what's right because of what I say? Whatever the consequences are, I'm able to bear the consequences if I do right because I know it's but see, that's the tragedy. You'll be bearing it for all eternity in hell. You'll be bearing your consequences for all eternity in hell. We don't want 
about that. That's what we're out. Read something in a book. You don't know who the hell wrote it. Oh, we know who wrote it. No, God don't write it in those man. Oh, he, you, God you, don't write it in man. Paper man. Sure he does. Sure he does. Oh, the real God does. The Bible even says God didn't write it. What's that? He even says himself that God didn't write it. Well. But, yeah, it's got to have it. I mean, it's all right. But. Only God could have had people write the Bible. I mean, it was written by over 40 different authors over a course of 1,500 years in different languages. And it's all got the same story, the same God. What about God. Mitt Romney, the Mormon Bible? That's probably the real Bible. That was written by Joseph Smith, one man under a vision from some devil. Well, you, know, you know what Joseph Smith's supposed to wrote him on? Not, not pencil and paper, it was on gold tablets. He, he, he said the Mormon Bible came to him on gold tablets. You know who's ever seen them? Nobody. They, they got a rock. They God wrote it all down. It's in the Bible. Where did it say that he was having people get drunk? Oh, the fake news Bible? Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I didn't get it right away. Uh, so, uh, the Bible says that all drunkards will have their part in the lake of fire. Do not be deceived. your way to hell, ladies. Stop peddling your way to hell. The Bible says that drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. Are you a drunkard today? Are you loving your drunkenness today? Why would you do such a thing? Why would you love drunkenness? Drunkenness destroys your body, you know. Have you ever heard of cirrhosis of the liver? Have you ever heard of drunk driving accidents? No, no, no. Your drunkenness is hateful towards God, and your drunkenness is hateful towards your neighbor. See, Jesus said, you need to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And if you're guzzling your beer, if you're pounding your jello shots, you are not loving the Lord your God with all of your mind. You are proving that you have no regard for your Creator. You are proving that you have no fear of God. And if you do not have fear of God, the Bible says that you do not even have the beginning of wisdom. The Holy Scriptures says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Oh, what does it say? Yes, the Bible talks about grace. That's why you wicked sinners aren't in hell already. It's God's loving grace that has kept you alive today. Even though you have hated God, you rebelled against God, you've sinned against Him and your neighbors. Oh, it's God's grace that brings His soul-saving gospel out here to the street of Nashville today. It's God's grace that tells you the way that you can be saved. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Right now, you are living under God's grace. But the Bible says that it's appointed unto man once to die, and then comes the judgment. That's right. It's not news. It's not fake news that you're going to die one day, and you're going to be judged. You're going to be judged by God when you die. Your creator, your sustainer, is also your judge. God is going to judge you. How are you going to fail when God judges your life, friends? Is God 
not going to judge you as one of his holy saints? Are you a holy saint of God today, living holy, living righteous in the eyes of the Lord? Oh, glory to God. You can be a heaven-bound saint. But if you love your sin today, if you are immersed in your wickedness today, if you love your perversion, you are not going to heaven. Wicked people, perverted people, people who are iniquitous in the eyes of God, those are the hell-bound sinners. See, the Bible says that hell was created for the devil and his angels. But if you die as a wicked, God-hating sinner, where else is he going to put you? There's no room for sinners in heaven, don't you know? If there are sinners in heaven, if there are drunks in heaven, if there are meth heads in heaven, if there are prostitutes in heaven, if there are poor all poets in heaven, it would be too much like Nashville. Oh, yes, you need to become a heaven-bound saint of God. That's right. The Bible says you must be born again. That's what Jesus said. You must be born again. You must repent from your sin. Repent means to stop it. Stop your sinning. That's what Jesus said. Repent from your sin. Turn from your sin. Start hating drunkenness. Start hating your cigarette smoking. Start hating your fornicative sex. Start hating pornography. Start hating lying. Start hating theft. You know why you should hate those things? Because God hates those things. You know why God hates those things? Because those things are evil. You don't love evil, do you? Oh, yes. People that love Love sin, love evil. People that love sin are embracing their killer. If you love your drunkenness, you are embracing your killer. You say, hey, bartender, give me another cup of what's going to kill me. Hey, bartender, give me a sh another shot of what's going to damn my soul. Wicked, wicked, wicked. And then there's the drug abusers. The drug abusers. Oh, they'll spend their money. Oh, they'll try and dodge the law. They'll get their meth. They'll get their crack. They'll get their marijuana. Oh, they'll get their drugs and they'll blow their minds. And they may think that they have dodged the laws of man. Oh, but God has seen you. God beholds the wicked and God beholds the good. Oh, all the things you've done in your life, all the things you've walked to, all the things you've put your hands to in your life, and all the things that you've ever even thought in your mind, God knows it. God has it all written down. And if you die in your sin, you're going to be judged for those sins. We don't want you to be judged for your sin. God does not want you to be judged for your sin. But if you persist, if you keep on in your sin, if you ignore the loving warnings of your local street preacher, if you neglect to read your Holy King James Bible, if you turn from the soul-saving gospel of Jesus Christ, there's no hope for you. There's only hope in the Lord. There's only hope in Jesus Christ. There is one hope. There is one holy hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, but there's many false hopes in the world, don't you know? That's right. Satan has made many false hopes in this world. They say, the Satan says, hey, why don't you join the Roman Catholic Church? That will get you to heaven. No, no, no. Satan says, hey, why don't you become a Mormon? That will get you to heaven. No, no, no. The devil says, hey, why don't you become a Jehovah's Witnesses? No, no, no. You're going to hell in that fake, fraudulent, false religious system. Hey, the devil says, why don't you join Scientology? You can be as God. Your mind can heal the world. Kill the world. The devil says, join Scientology. And you can take control of your life. Ha! What a joke. Where is Aaron Hubbard today? Where is the fine founder of Scientology today? He's in the everlasting lake of fire. And that's where you're going to. 
Are you all following the fake, phony, fraudulent religious system today? How do you know? How can you tell? I'll tell you how you know. The founders are dead. Joseph Smith is dead. That Russell guy, he's dead. Ron Hubbard, he's dead. The popes die one after another after another. The popes die. Oh, you fight if you follow a religious system that is led by men like Buddha. Where is Buddha today? He's dead. Oh no, you need to become a Christian. You need to become a holy saint of God. That's right. Follow Jesus. Jesus is alive. Jesus conquered the grave. Jesus died and rose again. Jesus ascended to the Father on high. Hallelujah. That's right. That's the only way to be saved. Follow Jesus. Jesus is alive. Don't follow dead people. If the founder of your religion is dead, like Muhammad, Muhammad is dead. Don't follow him. You end up in hell with him. Follow Jesus. Jesus is alive. Jesus is in heaven. Jesus is reigning with the Father on high. And if you follow Jesus, oh, that's right, you can go to heaven with Jesus. You can spend eternity with Jesus Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. Turn from your false idolatry. Turn from your made up religions. You can't do what it takes to take care of your sin problem. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus said, most everybody is going to hell. Haven't you read that part yet? Where Jesus said, most everybody is going to hell. He said, broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many people are found on that broad road that leads to destruction. And Jesus went on to say, narrow is the way that leads to everlasting life. And few that be found on it, narrow is the way to heaven. So in effect, Jesus said, most all y'all are going to hell. Why? Because you love your sin. Why? Because you hate righteousness. Oh, yes. We see it every day. We come out here. We preach the holy words of God. We preach the soul-saving gospel of Jesus Christ. And people get angry. People get irate. We're out here trying to save your soul. Put your way to heaven. Show you how your wicked soul can be washed again. Oh, yes. Your sin has made you filthy in the eyes of God. Your sin has damned your soul to the everlasting lake of fire. Your sin has condemned you. There's only one way to cleanse your filthy soul. Your filthy, hell-deserving, wretched soul. Oh, it can be cleansed. It can be washed clean. Clean as the fish-driven snow. That's why you can have a clean soul. And there's only one way for you to have a clean soul. And that's to have your soul washed by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That's right. That's why Jesus died. That's why Jesus was nailed on the cross. That's why Jesus... Jesus submitted to the hands of his creation to be nailed to the cross, to bleed out on that Roman soil. Oh, he died so he could cleanse your filthy, rotten, dirty soul. You can be washed. You can be made new. You can be made holy by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, but God is not going to force himself on you. God makes it available to you. That's why we're out here today. That's why the King James of Bible is here today, that you can hear God's holy word. Respond to God's holy word. Acknowledge that you're a hell-bound sinner and say, oh God, save my soul. Oh God, I've sinned against you. Oh God, I never want to sin again. I want to be a living saint of God. And God is faithful. God is merciful. And God is justified because of his blood of the son Jesus Christ that he can forgive you. He can assuage his anger and wrath that you've amassed over your own soul for your sin. Hallelujah. That's right. God is justified. He can save your soul. You can be born again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for His mercy. Praise the Lord for His grace. Oh, but His grace is going to run out. God's grace, it's going to end one day for every man. God's grace is going to end one day for every woman. You know what it ends? It ends when you die. When you die, then comes the judgment. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, and then comes the judgment. Are you ready to be judged by God? 
Is your soul pure in the eyes of God? Or are you loving your sin? If you love your sin, you are filthy, vile, disgusting, and dirty, and hell bound in the eyes of God. Oh, but God's mercy and God's grace says that you can be born again. You can be made a new creature in Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus said you must repent from your sin. That means change your mind about it. Start hating sin. Start hating drunkenness. Hating pornography. Hating homosexuality. Hating all the things that God hates. Oh, you can become like God, don't you know? Hate what God hates and love what God loves. God loves truth. God loves patience. God loves long-suffering. Oh, that's right. You can start living a, God, a life that pleases God and stop living a life that angers God. If you're living a life that's full of sin, if you're living a life that is not loving towards your neighbor, oh, you're proving that you are not a heaven-bound saint. Oh, we have not come out here to condemn anybody. We're not out here to condemn your soul. It's too late. We can't condemn your soul. You've already done it. You've already condemned your soul for your sin. Oh, and what about God's grace? Oh, God's grace, even though you sinned, has been extended towards you because God didn't kill you and throw you into hell the first time you sinned. And you would have been completely justified to do so. No, God's grace has been extended towards you. God's grace is standing on a step stool today. No, He didn't take me to heaven when I got saved. He left me here for you. He left my brother Marvin here for you. He left my brother Joshua here for you to preach the gospel that you might be saved too. Hallelujah. God has left His holy saints on this earth. God has left the real Christian church on this earth to preach the gospel so that more may be saved. Are you going to be saved today by repenting from your sin, turn from your sin, trusting in the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross to assuage God's anger and wrath over your life for your wicked, filthy, debaucherous sin? Oh yes, I used to be a sinner too. I used to have false religion too. I used to be a drunkard too. Oh, but I repented. Oh yes, now I hate drunkenness. I hate the porno. You should hate it too. You know why? Because God hates it. You have a question, young lady? Apparently not. The Bible says that women should learn in silence. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Apostle Paul, the women should learn in silence. So it's time to listen up. Oh, you need to repent from your sin. You need to trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. That's the only way. You think your works can save you from hell? You think praying to a dead woman like Mary can save your soul? You think giving money to a pedophile hiding religious organization like the Roman Catholic Church can save your soul? No, no, no. Your works cannot save your soul. Only the work of Jesus Christ. There is only one work that can save your soul. There is only one work that can save you from what you deserve. See, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the Bible goes on to say that the wages of sin is death. That's what the Holy Scriptures of God says. The wages of sin is death. So why do people go to hell? Because they've earned it. Just like you've got your job. You go to work all week and you want your paycheck. Oh, you, but, but you're working for God right now. How are you as God's employee? Are you pleasing the Lord your God with your life? Or are you angering Him? Are you reading God's holy book, the King James Bible, and obeying it, following God's instructions for your life? Or are you rebelling against Him, disobeying Him, turning from what is good and loving what is evil? Some people have a lot of fake, phony, fraudulent ideas in this, in this nation. My goodness, America is filled with a lot of bad ideas, isn't it? Oh yes, a lot of people say, they'll even teach their children. Whatever makes you happy, Johnny, that's what you should do. 
hey Susie, whatever feels good to you, that's what you need to do. And then what happens? Johnny becomes a sodomite. Susie becomes a whore because it makes her feel good. I hope you're not telling your children to do what makes them feel good. They may decide that heroin makes them feel good. I hope you're not telling your children that they should follow their own heart because the Bible says that man's heart is wicked and desperately wicked. Who can know it? No, no, no. Your parents should be telling your children to follow the Lord. The Bible says that parents should teach their children the nurture and admonition of the Lord. The Holy Scriptures, the God that has given you your children. He has told you that you need to raise your children in the fear of the Lord. Are you teaching your children to fear God? Are you teaching your children to fear the one that's going to judge their life? That's what God expects of you. The Bible says if you don't read the Bible to your children, you're a bad parent. Are you reading the Holy Scriptures to those wonderful children that God has blessed you with? Are you teaching your children how to love and fear the Lord? Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Hey, parents, have you told your children to love the Lord their God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength? Oh, yes, that's what God expects of you. And Jesus said the second commandment that is equal to the first commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. Hey, if you love your neighbor as yourself, you're not going to sin against your neighbor. You're not going to lie to your neighbor. You're not going to commit adultery with your neighbor. You're not going to steal from your neighbor. You're not going to buy crap from your neighbor. You're not going to look at pornography because those poor women are your neighbors too. Jesus said to love your neighbor, not lust after your neighbor. Jesus said to do what's good for, for your fellow man, not take advantage. Oh, yes. So many sicknesses in the society today. Sick, twisted society we live in today. Can you believe the things that are illegal in America today? The things that are lawful? I've heard right here in Nashville, there's three, count them, three abortion clinics right here in Nashville. A place where you can murder your babies. Three clinics in Nashville. Three abortion clinics where women can go get an appointment with Dr. Killer and murder their babies. Oh, how wicked, how vile, how disgusting. Oh, we don't need to shut down the abortion clinics. We need to have women that fear the Lord. Women that won't even want an abortion. Women that will love their children instead. But instead we have a generation of women today. Oh, they don't love their children like they're supposed to. They hate their children. To the tune of 3,000 a day. 3,000 women in America today will go to Dr. Killer and have their daughter or have their son ripped from their womb and thrown in the trash. Oh, what a wicked, perverse generation we live in today. Oh, you think God is okay with that? You think God's not going to pour out His judgment on this baby-killing generation? Oh, no, no. Judgment Day is coming. The question for you, friend, is judgment coming down on your head? Are you going to escape the wrath of God? If you are living wickedly, if you are loving wickedness, God's wrath is coming down on you one day today. Oh, yes, a holy and loving God. He said, go forth and inhabit the whole earth. God said to inhabit the whole earth. You know what that means? Having babies. That's right. God said have lots and lots of babies. Have those babies in holy matrimony. That's what he gave you sex for. God gave you sex to have babies in holy matrimony. Oh, but so many people, they don't care about what God says. They don't care about holy matrimony. They don't care about the babies that God commanded them and designed them to have. They just want their own 
selfish pleasure. The people that turn from the God's design for sex and just go after their own selfish pleasure, God curses your genitals with sexually transmitted diseases. That's what you get for disobeying God's design for you. God designed holy sex to be between a man and a woman. Oh yes, if a virgin man and a virgin woman get married and they have lots of holy sex and have lots of children, guess what? No STDs, no chlamydia, no syphilis, no AIDS, no human papillomavirus. Oh no! There's too many people that are sick, twisted, and perverted. They say, oh, I don't want to do it with my body as the way God designed it. I just want to have sex with every Tom, Dick, and Harry I can get my hands on. Oh, I just want to get my hands on any, any drunken whore I can get my hands on. So what does God do about it? He curses your genitals with sexually transmitted diseases. God's warning you that you're destroying your body, destroying your soul, and destroying your eternity. Oh, yes, you need a turn. You have a question, ma'am? You're talking explicit. You right? you're That's right. So, uh, you uh, have that's right, they need to be warned. Most parents won't warn their children. So when I say What's that? You should get out of here. You don't have a permit for this shit. A permit? You got a party mouth, woman. You need to watch your mouth. There might be ladies around. Fuck you. Talk about me. Oh, now look who's got foul language. I smell I smell a hypocrite. Oh, what a foul hypocrite smell that is. Oh, we're just out here to warn our neighbors. We're just out here to love on the people of Nashville today. That if you don't turn from your sin, you're going to burn for your sin. If you don't comply to the statutes of God, you're going to fly in hell for your sin. Hey. You have a question? Hey, I got a, I got a malfunction. What's your question? Know your role and shut your mouth. Shut my mouth? Hey, take your own advice, sir. We're just out here loving people. You're not very tolerant, are you? When are you going to be a loving person and start turning to righteousness, loving God, hating sin? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is it time for a new battery? Buttons, maybe? I don't think so. Did he press the button? Oh, praise the Lord. I don't think no, so. No, there's no buttons pressed. Here, let me see this. Maybe that's a battery? I don't know. Oh, that was Check it out. Oh, yes, we're out here to love our neighbors. It's your battery. We're out here to... What's that? It's his battery that's dead. Okay. We're out here to love your souls. See, nobody loves you more than Jesus Christ. Nobody has done more for you than Jesus Christ. When he died on the cross, Jesus made a way that you can be saved. Jesus made a way that you can be born again. Jesus made the way that you can be made a new creature in Christ. Hallelujah. See, everybody has sinned. All have come short of the glory of God. Oh, but you can be born again. You can assuage. You can have God's anger and wrath assuaged from over your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You don't have to get what you deserve. You don't have to get what you deserve. You can get what you don't deserve. You can get eternity in heaven with God because you don't deserve it. Oh, yes. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. That's what the Bible says. And you're with your sin, you've earned a wage. And the wage you've earned because of your sin is death. 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 Death in the everlasting lake of fire. Oh, but the gift of God is eternal life. And it's available for you. But you must repent from your sin. That's what Jesus said. Repent from your sin doesn't mean to feel bad even though you should. Repent from your sin does not need to feel guilty even though you are. Repent from your sin means to change your mind about it. Turn from your sin. Start hating sin like God hates sin. That's right. You need to hate drunkenness. You need to hate horse behavior. You need to hate drug abuse. You need to hate false religion. Oh, yes. You need to be a loving person that hates iniquity and loves righteousness. Hallelujah. Was that the battery? New battery. Brand new. Can you hold it for a second? I get a drink. It can't handle the truth. You want to preach for a minute? If you want to preach for a minute. What's that? I can't handle the truth of Kevin.
you left the microphone on and it was clicking up against the the, the, the pole there and making the noise for the bullhorn. We're looking around like, where? Whoa, okay. You got an extra water in there? I do, I have plenty of water. Marvin, you want one? He, he, he can't have one. But these banners are getting a little under control. Oh, okay. You yeah, got it? I got it. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And if you're not one of God's holy saints, you're not going to be led into God's holy heaven. Yes, if you're a sinner today, if you're a drunkard today, if you're engaging in foolish behavior today, oh, you're damning your own soul. Jesus said to repent from your sin. Jesus said you must be born again. The Bible says that you must be made a new creature in Christ. That's right. You must be made a new creature in Jesus Christ. That's the only way to be saved. That's the only way to assuage God's anger and wrath over you for your soul. Oh, but most people, they just love, love, love their sin, sin, sin. Oh, the hypocrites. Oh, the hypocrisy. People say, I love God. Pass me another beer. They say, oh, I love God. Oh, give me a light on my cigarette. Oh, and if your God approves of drunkenness, if your God approves of cigarette smoking, your God is the devil. It's the devil that approves of you destroying your life through sin. Oh, yes. People say God understands. Prove it. Jesus said, oh, I don't have to prove it, sir. You'll see it two seconds after you die. It's all going to be proven two seconds after you die. <laughs> You have a question, sir? Yes, yes. What are you doing today? Are you getting drunk today? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You look, look at this guy. He's getting drunk today, and he's asking me if it's the best. Hey, I'm out of here loving my neighbor. I'm out of here loving my God, Mr. Drunkard, Mr. Cirrhosis of the liver, Mr. Wasting Your Money. Oh, yeah, I'm out here giving you the riches of God. I'm out here giving you the soul-saving gospel of Jesus Christ. And what are you going to get? Poison. You're going to walk up to the bar. Show over your money and say, give me some so I can get intoxicated. Oh, yeah. You know why they call it getting intoxicated? It's because it's toxic. Hell, You're yeah. destroying your life. Don't you have anything better to do today? Not up to you. Don't you have anything better to do today? You see, I love Jesus God. said the Lord, the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And if you're guzzling your alcohol, you're not loving God with your mind. You're damning your soul with your choices. You're damning your soul with your sin. But it's awesome. You say sin is awesome? Yeah. Do you think sex outside of marriage is awesome? Yeah. How about the sexually transmitted diseases? Are they awesome? How about the chlamydia? How about the syphilis? How about the AIDS? How about a little uh, how about a little sodomy? Is sodomy awesome? That'll get you a little prolapse rectum. That'll be awesome, won't it? Hardly. Hardly. So many sin-loving God-haters out here today. When are you people going to stop being sin-loving God-haters and start being God-loving sin-haters? I'm a joke, sir. Hey, that's what they said about Jesus. They laughed and they scared and they called Jesus crazy too. Praise the Lord. Hey, I bet Jesus got flipped off too. But sir, you better watch out. Watch out. The Lord may throw you into hell middle finger first. Oh, you, you gospel mocking God hater, God may throw you into hell middle finger first. God didn't give you those middle fingers to uh, mock at the preaching of the gospel. God gave you your fingers. He gave you your toes. God gave you your hands and your feet and your mind and your body and the very breath in your lungs to love Him, to serve Him, to love your neighbor as yourself. Praise the Lord. That's what He gave you your body for. That's what He gave you your life for. To love Him and to serve and love your neighbor. 
but so many people. They don't care about loving God. They don't care about serving their neighbor. They just want to make themselves feel good. Hey, what's the next thing that'll make me feel good? Oh, I think a beer will make me feel good. Oh, I think smoking a joint will make me feel good. Oh, and that's the mantra of the hellbound sinners. That's the mantra of the people that hate their neighbor, the people that hate God. They say, oh, look at the drunken whore. Maybe I can have sex with her and it'll make me feel good. Oh, yes. Those are selfish, evil, wicked, hellbound sinners. And we're out here calling you wicked, hellbound sinners to repent from your sin. Jesus said to repent. That means change your mind about it. Stop hating evil. Stop loving what God says is good. Start obeying the Lord and stop obeying the devil. If you live your life for your own selfish pleasure, oh, you are showing that you have contempt and rebellion against the Lord. And people who have contempt and rebellion against the Lord, they will not spend eternity in heaven with Him, don't you know? You wouldn't want somebody that has contempt and rebellion against you to live in your house. And if you have contempt and rebellion against God, you're not going to live in His holy mansions in heaven. Oh, no, you need to submit and surrender to the God that created you. You need to submit and surrender to your Creator, Jesus Christ. You need to submit and surrender to the one that's going to judge your life. Jesus Christ in the Bible, He created you. He's keeping you alive right now. And Jesus Christ in the Bible, He's going to judge your life. Are you ready to be judged by Jesus, your Creator? Are you ready to be ready to be judged by Jesus, the Judge of the whole universe? Oh, what would happen today if you died, friend? What would happen if you? People are going to die today in Nashville, no doubt. City the, city the size of Nashville, somebody's going to die tragically. But what's going to happen to you? Two seconds after you die, when you stand in front of a holy God, a righteous God, a God that's, that knows everything you've ever done in your life, a God that has seen everything you've ever put your hand to in your life, what's going to happen when he judges you? Are you going to be holy or are you going to be filthy, filthy, filthy? Oh, yes, you must be holy and clean before the Lord. And there's only one way to become holy and clean before the Lord. That's to be washed in the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. That's why Jesus died on Calvary, don't you know? That's why Jesus submitted to his creation to, to die a horrible death so he could shed his blood for you. Amen. That's the only way to be saved. But so many people, they follow false religions, false prophets like Muhammad. Hey, don't follow Muhammad. Muhammad's dead. Muhammad can't help you. You need to follow Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is alive. He's in heaven. Muhammad's dead. Don't follow him. Buddha's dead. Don't follow him. Aaron Hubbard is dead. Don't follow him. Joseph Smith is dead. Don't follow him. Follow Jesus Christ. The Jesus Christ of the Bible. He's the only way you can be saved. He's the only one that can wash your soul clean. That's right. Turn from your false religions like Islam. Turn from your false religions like Roman Catholicism. Turn from your false religions like Scientology. Turn from your false religions like Mormonism. Turn from your false religions like Jehovah's Witness. Those Watchtower Society clowns, what a bunch of liars. What a bunch of false prophets in the Watchtower Society. Oh, but you can trust the Holy Word of the Lord. You can trust the Holy King James Bible Hallelujah. Every prop, every prophecy in God's holy word, it's going to come true. It's going to happen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All the wickedness in the world, people wonder when something's going to be done about it. All the wickedness in the world, people wonder when's Hillary Clinton going to get what she deserves? Oh, when's Donald Trump going to get what he deserves? Oh, yes. Judgment day is coming. Justice is on its way. Are you ready to be judged by God? Are you ready to be under the justice of God? 
God? Are you holy and clean, washed clean in the shed blood of Jesus Christ? Or are you amassing God's anger and wrath over your life for your sin? Are you still sinning against the Lord? Are you still living with sin in your life? Have you not repented from your sin towards God? Yes, hallelujah. You must repent from your sin towards God. God is the one you sinned against, not some pedophile priest. God in heaven, He is the one that created the laws and statutes that you are to abide by. Not some man, not some religious system. Oh, you need to repent from your sins for the Lord. You need to humble your heart towards the Lord. You need to submit and surrender to God on high. You need to abandon your life of wickedness. You need to turn from the earthly things you love. Oh, if you love the world, you're going to die with the world. This whole world is going to be destroyed. This entire planet is going to be destroyed one day. All the wickedness is going to be burned up in flaming fire. Oh yes, a fervent heat is going to destroy the very elements of this world. Hallelujah. This wicked, debaucherous, corrupt world is going to be destroyed. And God is going to create a new world. A new world for His holy saints. Are you a holy saint today? Are you ready for God's new world? world he's promised to create it's going to be inhabited inhabited with people that love god it's going to be inhabited with people that hate sin are you a god loving sin hater today do you hate drunkenness do you hate pornography do you hate lying and stealing oh yes god hates those things God hates selfishness, don't you know? That's the essence of all sin, selfishness. Oh yes, the selfish people, they're going to be cast into the everlasting lake of fire like they deserve. Oh, but if you repent from your sin, turn from your sin, be born again, be, be made a new creature in Christ. Hallelujah. Get washed by the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. Oh yes, you need to live a holy life before God. And the Holy Bible says that holy women dress modestly. That's right. The Holy Bible says that godly women dress modestly. Oh, you should be dressed modestly today. God forbid that any woman out here would dress in a way that would cause their neighbor, neighbor to stumble. Oh, yes, Jesus said that even if you look at a woman that lust after her, you have committed adultery with her already in his heart. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said if you even look at a woman that lust after her, you have committed adultery with her already in your heart. Are you an adulterer at home? today? Are you tempting men or maybe even lesbians to become adulterers in their heart today? That's not a loving way to live, people. That's not a loving neighbor to dress lustfully. That's not a loving way to dress horishly, possibly causing your neighbor to stumble. That's why the Bible says that godly women dress modestly. Praise the Lord. And the Bible goes on to say, that you need to live sober-minded. The Bible says to live sober-minded. You know why? Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And if you're not living soberly, you're not loving the Lord with your mind. You need to love the Lord with all of your mind, turning from your beer, turning from your liquor, turning from your marijuana, turning from your drugs, turning from your heroin. You need to be sober-minded. Oh, yes. And it's the God of the Bible, the God of the Holy Scriptures. You need to trust Him. You need to trust the true God, the real God of the King James Bible. Oh, turn from all the false gods. Oh, yes. The, de the devil has brought forth many, many false gods. False gods that say you can work your way to heaven. False gods that say be, even though you've sinned, you can uh, do what it takes to take care of your sin problem. Another lie from the devil. If you're in a religion that says that you need to do works to save your soul, you are in a false religion. If you are in a religious system that says that you need to do things to make up for your sin, your, your religion is fake, it's a phony, and it's a fraud, and it's leading you to hell. 
If you live in a religious system, if you uh, if you are part of a religious system says that you need to do certain things to get right with God, you are following a religion of the devil. It's the devil that says you can do things to cover your sin. Oh no, the real God. He shed his own son's blood on the cross to assuage God's anger and wrath over your life for his sin. Oh yes, the real God of the Bible. There is only one way through Jesus Christ. There is only one way. Oh yes, turn from the false religions of today. Don't follow dead false prophets. Don't follow dead false prophets. Let's see. What religion systems have dead false prophets? Oh, let's see. How about Islam? How about Jehovah's Witnesses? How about Aaron Hubbard? How about the false prophets of Mormonism? If you are, if you are following a dead false prophet, you're going to burn. You're in trouble with God if you are following your false religions. We're out here presenting you the true way to be saved. The only way to be saved. Oh, that's right. Jesus Christ of the Bible. Jesus Christ that rose from the dead. Jesus Christ that ascended on high to the Father Most High. He said that I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That's what the Jesus Christ of the Bible says. Oh, there's many fake Jesuses today. There's a fake Jesus in Islam, there's a fake Jesus in Mormonism, there's a fake Jesus in Jehovah's Witness, there's a fake Jesus in Scientology, hey, there's even a fake Jesus in what it calls itself Christianity. There's probably a lot of people who go into some church building today that call themselves Christians and they're following a fake, phony, fraudulent Jesus. You know how? Because he does not match up with the Jesus of the Bible. Does the Jesus that you follow match up with the Jesus of the Bible? The true Jesus. The Jesus that can save your life. The Jesus that is God. Who is the Jesus of the Bible? Are you reading the Bible, friends? Are you believing the Bible? Well, that would be a start. But unfortunately, the devil's read the Bible. The devil believes the Bible. He knows it's true. Oh, friends, but you need to obey the Bible today. What's the difference? The devil's going to hell because he does not obey the Lord. Oh, you need to read the Bible, believe the Bible, and obey the Bible. That's right. The Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. You need to obey your Lord. Oh, you need to turn from sin. Jesus hates sin. Jesus hates drunkenness. Jesus hates honest behavior. Jesus hates people that don't want to be sober. Jesus gave you your mind, you know. Jesus gave you your body. Jesus is keeping your body alive today. Are you living in accordance with how Jesus commands you to live? The one that's keeping you today. Are you living holy? Oh yes, the Bible says that a woman should have long hair. It is her glory. God forbid that a woman would cut off her glory. The Bible says that a godly woman dresses modestly. If a woman loves and fears the Lord, she'll read the Holy Scriptures and obey the Holy Scriptures. Growing her hair long for her glory, dressing modestly to honor the Lord and to love her neighbor, not causing her neighbor to stumble. Oh, praise God. Oh, and the men. Oh, the men. Oh, if the men love their neighbor today, you know, Jesus told you to love your neighbor. If you men loved your neighbor, you wouldn't be looking at the pornography, you know. Jesus said to love your neighbor, not lust after your neighbor. You know, lust is not love. Oh, the porno perverts. The porno perverts, they don't love their neighbor. They lust after their neighbor. Wicked, wicked, wicked. A billion dollar industry in America today. The most prevalent slave trade in America today is the pornography industry. The pornography industry, the, the billion dollar industry in America today, 
the pornography industry, it is the biggest slave trade in America. We love naked women! Wicked, wicked, and hell bound hating. Anybody that says that they love pornography hates women. Love pornography, hate women. I love pornography. Oh, more more uh, men that prove that they hate women by saying that they love pornography. Jesus said to love your neighbor. Stop twerking. You're not Sammy or Miley Cyrus. You're not Sammy Virus. No, no twerking out here. Hey, there's women and children around here, woman. This isn't a burlesque show. Control yourself. Control yourself. This is a no twerking zone, women. Control yourselves out here. This is a family event out here today. Oh, you need to love your neighbor, not twerk in front of your neighbor. Jesus said, Jesus said, if you even look at a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. Oh, I hope there's no women out here trying to get their neighbors to lust after them. Make them an adulterer in their heart. All oh, women are supposed to be loving people. God expects women to be wives and mothers. Women that love the Lord, want to please their creator, they want to be right with their judge, will be wives and mothers. Praise the Lord. That's the way to live. That's what God designed your body for. It's very obvious. But most people, they don't care about how God designed their body. They don't care what their judge expects of them. They just want to please their own selfish self. Does somebody have a question over there? You have a question? I'm a lesbian. I'm a lesbian. How do you feel about that? How do I feel about a lesbian? Who cares? Do you care what I feel about a lesbian? No, but God is going to burn you. God hates all sex perverts, just like the pedophiles, just like the porno perverts, just like all the sodomites. They're going to hell, hell, hell. Not because I say so, but because God hates your sin. And if you love your sin, that's true that you hate God. And all sin-loving, God-hating, sex perverts are going to hell. Isn't that good news today? There's no pedophiles in heaven. Hallelujah. Most of those Roman Catholic cardinals and bishops, those pedophile priests, they're going to hell. Isn't that good news from the Lord? All sex perverts, all pedophiles, all lesbians, all homosexuals, all porno perverts, all sodomites, all fornicators, they all deserve to go to hell. But the good news is you don't have to get what you deserve. See, you would have found out the bad news on your own. You could have found out the bad news about two seconds after you died. We're out here with the good news. We're out here with the good news. The soul-saving gospel of Jesus Christ. Since she was stronger than she, he violated her and lay with her. Rape is great. Keep it up, buddy. Yes, there is rape in the Bible just like there's rape in Nashville. There's murder in the Bible just like there's murder in Nashville. There's drug abuse in the Bible just like there is in Nashville. Oh, and those people in the Old Testament, they were judged, judged, judged if they didn't repent from their sin. And just like here in Nashville. That's right. Even though there's rape here in Nashville. Oh, it's going to be judged. The question is, are you going to be judged? You can escape judgment. God's judgment. You can escape God's anger and wrath. You can be born again. Oh, you filthy, rotten, just debaucherous soul. It can be washed clean. That's right. Your soul, even though you made it filthy from all your sin, it can be washed clean by the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But if you continue on your sin, if you love your sin, you're going to be judged for your sin and you're going to be cast in the everlasting lake of fire for your sin. That's why Jesus said to repent from your sin. That means stop it. Knock off your wicked, neighbor-hating sinners. See, all sinners hate their neighbors. 
See, people that sodomize their neighbor hate their neighbor. People that get drunk, they hate their neighbor. People that smoke their wacky tobacco hate their neighbor. People that look at their porno, well, that's lusting after your neighbor, isn't it? That's not loving your neighbor. No, no, no. Oh, hope to God that Nashville would become a city filled with God-loving sin haters. That's what God wants you to be. A God-loving sin hater. Hallelujah. That's available to every man, to every woman. You can turn from your sin. You can be born again. You can be made a new creature in Christ. That's right. You can get a new eternal destiny. Oh, you don't have to be a hell-bound sinner. You don't have to be judged and thrown in the everlasting lake of fire like you deserve. No, you can get what you don't deserve. Oh, you can get an eternal mansion in heaven built by Jesus Christ himself. Hallelujah. Jesus said he went to heaven to build mansions for his holy saints. People that have turned from their sin. Are you one of God's holy saints today? Are you, have you turned from your sin? Do you eschew evil? When somebody brings you evil, do you say, eschew, eschew, get that evil away? No, yes. God expects you to love righteousness. Turn from evil. Live your life for your holy Father in heaven. You ready, brother? Oh, yes. Oh, but I'm not the only loving man of God out here today. My brother Marvin here. Oh, it's his birthday today. He is out here for his birthday today. Oh, he's not worried about getting gifts on his birthday today. Oh, he's out here to give you the gift. My brother is out here to give you the most the most valuable gift that there has ever been in your, the whole universe. Oh, yes. He's out here to give you the gift of God, to present you the gift of holiness and righteousness and in the everlasting kingdom of God. Will you take my brother Marvin's holy gift, his eternal gift? Hallelujah. Oh, it's available for you, friends. Praise the Lord. Planet Fitness. Uh, some of you might say, well, who are you to judge? Well, that's a good question. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm a saint. According to the Bible, the saints shall judge the world. 1 Corinthians 6, 2. Jesus told me to judge. John 7, 24. Jesus said, judge righteous judgment. Here's another one. That gives me the qualification to judge. A spiritual man, that's me, judges all and is rightly judged by no man. That's what gives me uh, the right to make judgments. And let's face it, they're not my judgments, they're God's judgments. Let God be true and every man a liar. If what I'm saying cannot be found contained in the Bible, the holy book, then I'm a liar. But I tell you the truth. I bring the truth and love to you down in Nashville today
They're going to get it in the end. That's right. AIDS is just a prerequisite judgment on homosexuals. Because next comes a burning flaming fire of their buttholes. That's right. For their homosexuality, they're going to end up in hell. The Jesus of the Bible that you think loves you so much will have no problem sending you to hell. That's right. He doesn't want you to go to hell. He takes no delight in the death of the wicked, the Bible says. But the wicked forsake their way. But the wicked turn to Jesus today. Be cleansed of your sin. You people need a bloodbath. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and 
but God sees it. No porno freaks will enter God's kingdom. No porno freaks, no masturbators. That's right. Will enter God's kingdom. No, that's time to get right with God's kingdom. No, that's time to get right with God. Porno freaks will burn in hell. That's right. I once heard a story about a woman who was a porn star and she came up to one of the preachers of righteousness and said she couldn't hold her bowels anymore. And she probably had gay bowel syndrome. All that parental from all that coral sex. It's hatred. It's not love. Lusting is disgusting. Jesus said if you lust after a woman and you committed adultery with her in your heart. Well, if you look at a woman with lust that's outside of marriage, right? You're guilty. 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 I'm surprised your wife would put up with that. God doesn't sin. Time to get right with God. Time to turn from your sin. Time to keep and obey Jesus. Give up your brotherly. Give up your sin. Time to turn to Jesus. You know, Johnny Cash, he sang about God's judgment. He said, burn, burn, burn. reports about him That's between him and God now. Yep. The lead singer from Lincoln Park, he's burning in hell. Yep, right alongside Michael Jackson, right alongside Prince and Robin Williams, burning in hell. That's right. For their sin. The Bible said that what shall a man gain? If he forfeits his own soul and gains the whole world. What shall a man gain if he gains the whole world and forfeits his own soul? Sin hater. You know what I'm thinking? There's not enough hatred down here today in Nashville. There's not enough hatred for sin. You people love your sin and you hate God. That's right. If you love your sin, you hate God. Don't go to hell. The 
says six things that the Lord hates. I'm not going to name them all. There's six things. Look it up for yourself. Six things that the Lord hates and seven are an abomination. One of the things that God hates is a lying tongue. One of the things that God hates is a lying tongue. Liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire. You know what else God hates? Hands that shed innocent blood. If you have had an abortion, God hates you. Real simple. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. The Lord is, I pray that the world will be more time to repent. I can't wait to fucking burn with you people too. Jews. I am a Jew. Call oh, my an enemy. Huh? Come talk to me. You're going to accuse me of being an enemy once you come talk to me. Yeah, well, you are. sin, to make you clean, holy, white as the driven snow in the eyes of God. And what happens if you're not clean, holy, and your soul is white as the driven snow in the eyes of God? Well, 
it's going to be a terrible eternity for you. Oh, yes. Only God's holy saints will be welcomed into heaven. Only God's holy saints are going to be in God's kingdom forever. Hallelujah. Are you a holy saint today? Have you been born again today? Jesus says you must be born again. You must trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. Oh, that's God's mercy. Oh, that's God's grace for you today. Oh, God could cast you into hell because of your filthy sin and He would be totally justified. Oh, in the end, God will be justified. Oh, but God's justice, it can be replaced with mercy if you repent from your sin. That means knock off your rebellion against God. That's what Jesus meant when He told you to repent. When Jesus said to repent, He meant turn from sin. Start hating sin. Why are you so judgmental? What's wrong with you? We're just out here loving people. You're out here sticking up your middle finger. Why? You need to hate sin. Don't you hate sin, ma'am? I do. I do. Good. What's that? No, we're not. What sin do you accuse us of? Because you judge people. Yeah, we're, we're, we're told to judge. Jesus told us to judge. But the Apostle Paul judge. told us to judge. Well, he's the ultimate exactly. judge. Exactly. But the Bible says, the Apostle Paul says, the mouth. spiritual shut man shut judges mouth. all shut things. And I shut judge you, woman, as a God hater. You, I judge you, woman, as a gospel rejecter. Oh, I hope she's the only gospel rejecter out here today. Oh, don't reject the gospel that can save your soul. You need to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. That's what Jesus said. And you prove that you love God by obeying God. Hallelujah. Are you obeying? God expects you to live holy. God expects you to obey Him. Have you even read your King James Bible to know what God expects of you? Oh, God hasn't only written down His expectations of you. He has given you a conscience. Oh, yes. Your conscience that smote you the first time you sinned. The first time you committed perverted sex. Oh, you felt guilty because you were. The first time you you got drunk. You felt guilty because you were guilty. Oh, the first time you stole something. Oh, you were guilty. Convicted by the conscience. Your loving God created for you because all those wicked acts are sin, sin, sin. And your sin is going to lead you to hell, hell, hell. Now I I want you to go to hell. I want you to be saved. God doesn't want to have to throw you into the everlasting lake of fire when you die. God wants to welcome you into heaven as his holy saint. But if you're going to live in your sin and love your sin, and if you die in your sin, you're going to be judged for your sin and cast into the everlasting lake of fire for your sin. Oh, that's not necessary, friends. Oh, nobody has to go to hell. Everybody can repent from your sin. That means to start becoming a God-loving sin hater, you know. Start hating sin. Don't you hate sin? God hates sin. God hates drunkenness. God hates pornography. God hates foolish behavior. God hates lying. God hates thievery. Witchcraft, rebellion, rebellious sin of witchcraft, and God hates false religious systems. Oh, there's no religious system that is legitimate. 
The devil has made the religious systems of the world. Oh, you just need to read your Bible, believe your Bible, and most importantly, obey your Bible. See, the devil, he's read the Bible. The devil, he knows the Bible's true. So if you only read and believe the Bible, you've only made it to the level of the devil. Oh, but you must obey God's holy word. You must read, believe, and obey your Bible. Why do you think, men? Why do you think God used His holy man to write it down for you? For you. God even made sure that you can read, I hope. But hey, you don't even have to have the Bible to be saved. All you need to do is hear the preaching of the Word. All you need to do is hear with your ears the soul-saving gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's upon you to submit and surrender to your Lord on high. It's on you to repent from your sin. Oh yes, Jesus said you must be born again. The Bible says that you can be made a new creature in Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, you don't have to be a filthy sinner all of your life. That's right. You can become a holy saint of God. Every one of you can be a holy saint of God. Oh, if Nashville, if Nashville was filled with holy saints of God, men would be occupied with loving the Lord, being good fathers, being husbands that please the Lord. If Nashville was filled with holy, saintly women of God that love the Lord and love their neighbor, they would be at home loving their husbands, caring for their children as the Lord said. Oh, yes. I've even seen women out here on the on Broad Street. Oh, they don't even know what their breasts are for anymore. Oh, they think their breasts are for everybody in Nashville to look at. Oh, no. God gave you a breast for feeding your children, not showing the public. That's why God gave you your breasts, women. Some people seem to have forgotten that. They're for feeding children, not for showing on a broad way. How wicked and perverse this generation has come. Some people don't even know what their body is designed for anymore. I've even heard that there's homosexuals out here on Broadway. Talk about somebody who doesn't even know what their body is for anymore. Let's do a little bit of biology one-on-one. -on -one. Let's do a little bit of biology. Hey, I'm tired of hearing you, woman. I'm tired of hearing you. Let's do a little bit of biology one-on-one. -on -one. See, basic biology says that your reproductive system is for reproducing. That's right. Your reproductive system is for making children. But most people, they think their reproductive system is just for their own selfish pleasure. That's how most people, too many people live their lives. They think that God gave them their body for their own selfish pleasure. No, no, no. Now let's look at the other part of biology. See, your digestive system is made for taking in food and nourishment and getting rid of the waste. That's pretty basic biology. If you've been to college or even high school, you should know that your digestive system is for processing food. But some people I've heard out here in Nashville, they confuse the reproductive system with the digestive system. Oh yes, I've heard that there's people out here in Nashville, there is men, they intermingle their reproductive system with another man's lower digestive tract. Oh yes, they will take their reproductive organ and ram it up another man's sewer pipe. Oh, yes, violating the laws of God, violating the way that they were created. Oh, Lord to God, that people would be loving people, loving towards God, and loving towards their neighbor. God 
God said to go forth and populate the world. That means having lots of children between husbands and wives. Oh yes, God expects men and women to have holy sex, not fornication sex. God expects men and women to have holy sex, not homo sex. You see, if you have sex the way God designed it, it brings forth life. If you have sex in the way that God didn't design it, it does not bring forth life. It brings forth death. When you violate God's laws, when it comes to sex, oh, it brings forth death. That's why you get your sexually transmitted diseases, your chlamydia, your human papillomavirus, your gonorrhea, your AIDS, your syphilis, your crabs, your herpes. That's because you're you are violating God's reproductive system. Oh yes. And ultimately it brings forth death. See, that's what happens when the homosexuals have their sodomite sex. They violate the design of their bodies and they reap the recompense for their error. That's why they get anal fissures and prolapse rectum and gay bowel syndrome. They reap the recompense for their error because they have violated God's design for their body. Oh yes, God designed men to be husbands and fathers. And God designed women to be wives and mothers. That's pretty basic. But when you start doing your own thing, when you start just doing what makes you feel good, when you start going with the flow of the culture, oh, you don't live a life that brings forth life. You don't have a life where you have a legacy of children and grandchildren and great grandchildren. Oh no, if you live a homosexual lifestyle, you leave a legacy of death, a legacy of disease, a legacy of loss and sorrow, and ultimately an eternity in hell fire. Oh yes, that's why God has called you to repent. You don't like the preaching of the word, sir? Then you're not right with God. You need to get right with God, sir. You need to put down your devil horns and stop making disgusting gestures out here in public in front of children. I don't know. Oh, yes. You need to turn from your perversion. You need to turn to righteousness. You need to start living a holy life before God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord that you don't have to live your life in sin. Hey, I know. I, admit, I used to even be a porn watcher. I know it's hard to believe. Oh, but you can be born again too. I used to even be a thief. But I'm not a thief anymore by the grace of God. Oh, yes, by the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. I turn towards righteousness and I eschew evil. Oh, yes, this whole world is always offering you evil, evil, evil everywhere. This world says, here's some pornography. This world says, here's some alcohol. This world says, here's some more perversion for you. Born again, holy saint of God, you say, no, 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 no evil for me. I'm not going to sin against my God. I'm not going to sin against my neighbor. You know all your sin is hatred towards your neighbor. Oh, yes. Your sin is not loving towards your neighbor. Your sin is selfishness. Your sin is selfishness. You say, I don't care about you, woman. I'm just going to get off and who knows what will happen in the morning. A lot of men out here, they say, hey, baby, I'll buy you a drink. Oh, they don't love you. They just want to use and abuse your body. Oh, that's not what loving people do when they don't stick up their middle fingers. Oh, it's a hatred. It's a hate generation. You can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And can you believe it? There's some people who don't want to hear it. You, you step up on a step stool and preach the soul-saving gospel of Jesus Christ. And what do the wicked do? They don't like it. They stick up their middle fingers. They'll even tell you to stop. Now, how intolerant and hateful is that? When you come out here as a Christian to tell people how their souls can be saved, 
to tell people how in trouble they are with God and people want to tell you to stop? Why would you want me to tell you to stop? Hey, if there was a fireman standing at your front door, being in your front door, hollering, telling to stop and go away, that's what I am. I am a spiritual fireman today. I'm telling you, your house is on fire. Your eternity is on fire. You need to escape the wrath of God. You need to escape God's anger and wrath that you have amassed all your life for your sin. You need to be born again. You need to be made a new creature in Christ. That's the only way to be saved. That's the only way you can be justified in the eyes of a holy, a holy God. Holy and righteous. God expects you to be like Him. God expects you to have a godly character. God, ex God accepts people into heaven who have godly characters. Do you have a character like God today? Do you tell the truth? Are you satisfied in your life with the things that God has given you? Are you using your body for the things that please your Lord? Are you, are you using your body just to do the things that please yourself? See, if you live after the pleasures of your body, you're going to die with the pleasures of your body. And you're going to be destroyed like your that you need to live after the pleasures of the Lord. You need to live after the pleasures of God. Then you can be welcomed into heaven. Start to be born again. Go to church. Woman, we are the church. That's right. That's what the Bible says. The bigger build church building. Jesus never said go to church. The Bible says that the Christians are. That's right. We're out here. The church is on the corner of Broad and Second today. I'm calling you to repent. I'm calling you to be born again. I smell marijuana. Who smells marijuana is not a loving thing to do. Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all of your mind. You have a question, ma'am? A few people have stopped. She asked if a lot of people stopped and talked. A few people. But where I do, a lot of people there are going different places. They're going to eat or their entertainment. So not a lot of people stopped in this kind of a venue. But thank you for asking. Do you have any other questions? Um, I don't know. I guess I, I wonder, like, what, what is your primary purpose? Is it, is it to love, like, love with the love of Jesus? Or is it to kind of try to shake people awake? Or, like, what's your purpose? In You're very, what's your name? My name is Hannah. Hannah? Hannah, I'm Kenner. You are right on both accounts. We are here to shake people out of their bed of iniquity. They're asleep in their sin, and if they don't get woken up for their sin, they're going to slide off into hell for their sin. And we're out here to preach the love of Jesus Christ, that they don't have to go to hell for their sin. They can stop being that anger God because they're not obeying God. They can start being loving people. That's why we're here. I think that may be the best question I've had all day. Do you have any others? I guess just, I don't know. I just think... Jesus warned about the hell a lot. He did. He did. That's why we're out here. We want what's best for everybody. We want what's best for God. See, God deserves to be loved and worshipped. He deserves to be honored. But when people are sinning, they're, they're violating His commandments. They're going against Him, you know, showing that they don't love Him. People should love God. And they fruit hate. Oh, it's on my one banner up there. You know, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. I guess when I study his life, I just, all I see is him loving people, and that's what draws them out of their sin. It's not... You remember when he rebuked entire cities? I yeah. I we called people snakes and vipers. He, he called a woman a dog. Jesus! He even called King Herod a fox. That's like a, a wild dog. That's even worse. You know, he, he called people out. That, remember the woman at the well? Remember that woman at the well? I do. Yeah. I do. He, he very clearly stated her sin, but he did so in love. Exactly. Of course. 
Well, there was there was kind of one like like we're having right now. I'm not yelling at you, you know. I'm not using harsh language. Okay. But Jesus, when he, uh, you remember the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew five, six, and seven. Oh yeah. How many times did he talk about the love of God? Not once. He warned them about hell. No doubt he raised his voice, nice and loud, for those thousands of people. There. One time he even remember he had to get on a boat. You know, they were crowding around him at the beach, and he. They pushed so people could hear us. Now, we don't have a boat, we don't have water, but we got a bullhorn and we got buildings. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in the, in the Old Testament, it says, I'll lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their sin. And tell Eric, uh, Jacob about his transgressions. And the New, New Testament talks about preach the word from the top. You know, we can't get on these buildings, but hey, I got a step stool. We're just out here obeying the Bible the best we can and loving our neighbors. We don't want anything bad to happen to our neighbors. Obviously, sin will destroy your life. Anybody who's a drunk, they're going to have a bad life. Anybody who's a uh, you know crackhead, whatever, they're going to have a bad life. But worst of all, you're going to have a bad eternity. How do you talk? Matthew 6, 5, and when you pray, you get up. Corners to be seen by others. That's right. What, do, you know, do you know there's a difference between praying and preaching, ma'am? Yeah, we're not praying out here to be seen of men. We're out here preaching the gospel. I prayed at home today. Praise the Lord. I just, I, I'm glad that we had this chat. I just want to hear your perspective on Because every encounter I've had with someone that is maybe struggling with, with something in their life, yeah. The only way that they'll have a desire to change is by first being loved and feeling loved instead of first feeling condemned. Right. So maybe we just had different experiences with sin and with, with drawing people into that change. Well, we're out here just as uh, the Bible is our guide. You know, we got the preachers of the Old Testament, we got Jesus in the New Testament, along with the apostles, you know, and uh, they just went out and preached the gospel and they were hated, you know. I mean, how can you hate anybody more than have them crucified? You know, tr tradition has that all the uh, all the apostles were basically unjustifiably murdered, you know, run through with arrows, you know, flayed alive, all kind of, you know, so we're, we're not out here to be accepted, we're not out here to make, make people feel good, we're out here just to preach as the gospel, as, as the Bible. Well, it's out of love. If I didn't love these people, I'd stay home. You know, I spend my money for all this stuff, you know, the banners are expensive and things, but, you know, gospel tracks, but that's because I love these people. If I didn't love these people, people don't even know, but they are my neighbor, Jesus said to love my neighbor, you know, and I got the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, so I love my neighbor. I don't want any one of these people to go to hell. So I'm out here in love. Tell them to repent. Preaching like Jesus. If you're a Christian, you should do the same thing. In some capacity. I don't know about standing on a street corner, but you know, you need to tell people the truth, like Jesus told them. Anybody who's a Christian, that means Christ-like. You need to look at Jesus, be like Him. You need to obey the apostles, like the Apostle Paul. He told us how to live. Right. Yeah. Well, it was so good to talk to you. All right, Hannah Glad and Wendy. Channel. All right. God bless you, sir. I hope you. Uh, I hope you get born again. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way. Oh yes, there's only one man that can save your soul. That's Jesus Christ. Donald Trump can't save your soul. America, as wonderful as it is, oh, it's going to be destroyed, destroyed, destroyed one day, along with all the wicked of the world. Some people wonder, when is there going to be justice in the world? When are the uh, ISIS fighters going to get what they deserve? I wonder, when in the world is Hillary going to get what she deserves? A lot of people wonder, when is Donald Trump going to get what he deserves? Oh, yes. The Bible talks about that day. It's called Judgment Day. There's a whole day God has set aside. It's called Judgment Day. Oh, how are you going to fare on Judgment Day? What are you going to look like in front of God on Judgment Day? Is He going to say to you, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the, the rest and pleasure of the Lord. Or is God going to say unto you, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Which is it going to be? Are you a holy, heaven-bound saint today? Or are you a filthy, heaven-bound sinner today? Do you love holiness or do you love sin? You can't do both people. Jesus said
said you cannot have two masters. Jesus said you cannot have two masters. You either love one and hate the other, or you'll despise one and cling to the other. Oh, you can't love Jesus and love the world. Jesus is not of the world. Jesus is of his Father in heaven. Are you of the world today, friends, or are you of your Father in heaven today? Oh, if you love the world, you're going to be destroyed with the law of heaven. Oh, you'll be welcomed into heaven when you die. Praise the Lord. Jesus' atoning work on the cross has made it possible for every man, every woman, everybody out here in Nashville today to be born again. Everybody out here in Nashville today can have God's anger and wrath to switch from over your life for your sin. That's right. Everybody can be made right with God. Everybody can have their, uh, let's say, their slate wiped clean with God. Oh, yes. Your dirty soul needs to be clean. Your dirty soul, if you're a sinner, you've made it filthy. Anybody who loves drunkenness, your soul is filthy. Jesus said that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Hey, friend, what comes out of your mouth? Are the words that come out of your mouth holy and chaste and pleasing unto the Lord? Oh, that means you have a holy, clean, and chaste heart. Oh, but if you have filth coming out of your mouth, swing your mouth. You're not going to be welcomed into heaven. Hallelujah. There's not going to be any sinners in heaven. in heaven, it would be too much like Nashville, wouldn't it? That would be wicked. And nobody wants drunks in heaven. Hallelujah. And they say they to get to heaven because they would repent of their sin. Hey, there's not any fornicators or sodomites in heaven. No. The people that obey God, that love the Lord, that love the Lord their God and hate their sin. Oh, yes. That's heaven-bound saints. Jesus said to repent from your sin. You need to repent towards God. You need to stop getting drunk and say, God, I don't want to be a drunk anymore. I don't want to sin against you any longer. If you're a poor and old pervert, say, God, I don't want to lust after my neighbor anymore. I want to love my neighbor instead. That's what we need in Nashville today. How do we make America a great heart? How about you start with being born again? Hey, who can make your own life great in the eyes of God? By repenting from your sin, trusting in the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. Obey God's Oh, yes. We get a lot of holy, heaven-bound saints in America today. That'll go a long way towards making America great again. Oh, but we got millions and millions of people that love to be drunk. That doesn't make America great. We've got 3,000 abortions happening in America today. That makes America not great. That makes America with the judgment of God. Oh, we have a billion dollar porn industry. That doesn't make America great. That makes America wicked, wicked, wicked. And the people that look at their porno, and people that love their porno, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. And the people that love to look at their porno, they're supposed to love their neighbor. Jesus says to love your neighbor. Oh, but if you're looking at the pornography, oh, you need to love, hey, hands off, sir. The cops may call that let's assault. Let's have a conversation. Wait a minute. Let's have a conversation. I'm, let me make my point. Calm you down. Your point. You're, you're so angry. angry. Hey, we're out here to tell you to be holy. What's you, wrong with you? I'm trying to have a conversation with you. I'm out here trying to preach and you're interrupting. You're, you're, you're being not, very you're rude. Spreading the you're gospel. out here. You're, you're making... Not spreading making, the gospel? You're making Christians look so, like idiots. Are you sin gifts in your life? People have you let Do you Lord? call yourself a, a, a Christian? Listen. Hey, get your hands off of me. How many people have you let to the Lord? That would definitely be assault. How many people have you led to the Lord in the last... 
long have you been doing this? We've led them all to the Lord. Hallelujah. What they do with the Lord, it's up to them. It's up to them. We've presented the gospel of Jesus Christ to everybody. We've presented the gospel of Jesus Christ to hundreds and thousands of people. How many people have you preached the gospel today, sir? You have. Well, praise the Lord. Get with it. Why are you trying to stop me from praising the gospel? We're just, we're just pre presenting the gospel. We're scattering seed. Jesus like in the word of the God of seed. Some will land on good ground. Some will land on rocky ground. Some will land on thorny ground. Oh, would to God that some of the seed of the word of God today would be implanted in your hearts. Which the God's word will bring forth good fruit. It's 30, 60, and 100 fold in your heart. That's right. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ out here today. Oh, yes. Let the word of God sink into your heart. We are casting the word of God abroad today. The word of God to hundreds and thousands in Nashville today. Will you be born again? Will you submit and surrender to the Father, your Father in heaven? Will you submit and surrender to the Lord on high? Will you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ? Will you turn to your Creator? Will you turn to the one that is keeping you alive right now? Are you going to turn to the Lord that's going to judge your life before it's too late? You need to turn to the Lord before it's too late. Oh, yes. It's going to be about two seconds after you die that you're going to find out it's too late. You can laugh. You can mock. You can believe your false religion until your last heartbeat. Oh, but your heartbeats are going to run out, friend. Your heartbeat is the drumbeat of your heart own funeral march. Your heartbeat is the drumbeat of your own funeral march. Every breath, every heartbeat, every step you take, you are going one step close, closer to judgment. Are you ready to be judged by God? Does God see you as one of His holy saints today? Or are you a sinner today? Oh, there's no sinners in heaven, friends. Sinners are hateful people. Sinners are intolerant people. Sinners are people who don't love God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's what Jesus said was the greatest commandment. Jesus' greatest commandment was to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And if you're a filthy drunk, you're not loving the Lord with all of your mind. If you're hitting the bomb like Cheech and Chong, you're not loving the Lord with all of your mind. If you're popping your pills today to get stoned, you're not loving the Lord your God with your mind. And you are the greatest commandment. That's right. Jesus said the greatest commandment was to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And if you are living with false religion in your life, if you think you can make up for your sin, if you think you can make yourself right with God, oh, religion and that is the idea of the devil I hope you're not following the ideas of the devil today oh yes the idea the ideas of the devil they take many many forms like Roman Catholicism like the Jehovah's Witnesses and the liars the Watchtower Society oh yes Joseph Smith and the Mormonism oh another lie of the devil that's going to lead you on to hell we don't want you to be led to hell friends we want you to follow Jesus Christ follow Jesus Christ the Lord he's the one he's the one worthy of of your reverence. See, it's very simple when it comes to these false religions. Don't follow dead people. If the founder of your religion is dead or will die one day, you are following a false religion. Muhammad is dead. Don't follow him. Joseph Smith is dead. Don't follow him. That Russell guy is dead. Don't follow him. Hell, I'm Hubbard is dead. Don't follow him. Buddha is dead. 
him. Don't follow him. Jesus Christ is alive. Jesus Christ conquered the grave. Jesus Christ rose on high and is sitting at the right hand of the Father on high forever and ever. Yes, follow Jesus. Follow Jesus Christ the Lord. Don't follow the systems of men. Don't follow the religious systems of the devil. Follow Jesus Christ. Jesus of the Bible. Jesus of the Holy Blessed G King James Bible. Oh, there's a lot of fake, phony, and fraudulent Jesuses today. Oh, yes. Every fake religion has their own fake Jesus. Oh, there's even men on the earth today walk around and they tell you that they're the Messiah. What is that, sir? That's marijuana, sir? I don't want your marijuana. I don't want your marijuana. I used to be a pothead, though. I used to smoke the wacky tobacco. I used to smoke the hashish. Oh, I used to blow my mind on the drugs. Oh, but the Lord has saved me. The Lord has purified me. The Lord has renewed my mind. Oh, and He can save and purify and renew you too, friends. You don't have to live your life in your drunkenness, in your drug addiction, in your porno addiction. You don't have to live your life as a lying gospel mocking thief. No, no, no. Why don't you become a heaven-bound saint today? Why don't you become holy in the saint of God? You know you're a sinner too. What sin do you accuse me of, ma'am? This. This is him preaching the gospel? Do you have a chapter well, no, in verse? This is not the gospel. That's not? Those are Bible verses? It's not the gospel. It's not? What is the gospel? He loves sinners. He hates the flesh, but he loves people. Did you know, did you know uh, what Psalms 5.5 5 says? Do you know what John 3.16 says? Yeah. God so loved the Lord. He so past loved tense, loved, past tense. That was preached to one man at night. Okay? But the uh, in the Psalms, it says God is angry with the wicked every day. And it also says that God, well, actually in the New Testament, Hebrews 1.9 says that Jesus is angry with the wicked every day. So everybody that's out here sinning every day, so who do you Jesus think God is angry with. Him? What's that? Who do you think God loves you? Well, He made an opportunity. He did the most loving thing for all of mankind possible throughout all of history, and that was to sacrifice His Son on the cross to make a way to heaven available for everybody. That everybody's sin can be forgiven. That was the love that He showed to the whole world. Is Jesus Christ dying on the cross? Do you believe that? Yes. Okay. That, that's what it was. It was showing love. But God's forgiveness is conditional. God's mercy is conditional. No, it's not. There's not going to be mercy. Do, do you think that drunk? Do you think murderers go to heaven? Right. And what did they? Have? What's the first thing Jesus said? people feel loved the way I don't want them to feel loved if they're sinners they need to feel condemned no. they need to be terrified no. they need to be horrified at the righteousness of God that's no. going to destroy the wicked no. what is the first thing Jesus no, no, said we do, we do ministry where we meet people where they are to walk right. with them right you know what you're doing you're standing above them thinking that you're better than them oh I'm a yeah. wicked I used to be a wicked sinner well, too why are you preaching that you're saying a lot of you no, I just said that a minute ago that is past tense this is present tense. Once a sinner, always a sinner. There's no Bible verse for that. Once a sinner, always a sinner. Well, you need to look that up for me. Look it up. You, you got a Bible app on your phone? There's always sin in your heart. Always. You're, you know what? I think you're denying the power of the Holy Ghost. Tell you what you're doing right now. You're I think you're denying the power of the Holy Ghost. You're looking at these people with hatred. They should hate sin. Everybody should hate sin. Sin destroys people. You know you're doing? You're hating them instead of hating the sin. That's if I hated these people, I would stay home. If I didn't have love for these people, I'd be kicking back on my couch, letting them wander off into hell. But because I love these people, I'm going to come out here and give them the gospel, show them how they tell them how they can be grace is extended to people when they sin against him but he doesn't throw them into hell right away that's God's grace you think God is, has so much grace that people are going to get into heaven even if they keep sinning grace overflows from the Lord 
again, you, you got your songs that you heard in church, but you don't have the Bible. You're you're quoting to me Christian songs. I say quote Christian songs, but you're not quoting the Bible. Okay, most Christian songs are really songs preparing people to worship the Antichrist. See, the Antichrist is the one that doesn't judge anybody. The Antichrist that says homosexuality homosexuality is fine. You want to drop some f bombs? The Antichrist says that's okay. If you want to worship any god of your choosing, the Antichrist says, oh, that's okay. So that's what's primarily being preached in the uh, songs and in the pulpits of most churches in America. It's preparing. You know, the Bible says that people are going to worship the church I belong to. I obey the Bible. We are the church. Didn't you know that? The Bible never says to, to build a big building, never, never says to go to church. Jesus never said go to church. Right? And I'm out here fellowshipping with my brothers, loving on our neighbors. That's what we're doing. We're just out here being normal Christians, loving one another and loving our neighbor. And calling you out of your false religion. Because you, young lady, and I don't know about her, she's not dropping any F-bombs, even though her, she might be able to uh, rethink her wardrobe. Okay, you need to be born again. Yeah, the Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul wrote that a spiritual man judges all things and is judged by no man. Jesus said to judge righteous judgment. And that's what we're out here doing today. When we see somebody out here sinning, somebody out here admits to sin, we say, well, that's a hell-deserving sin. That's a righteous judgment. So we're just out here obeying the words of the Lord, obeying the Bible. But you, young lady, well, that's because your heart is dark. Your heart is hardened against the gospel. That's because you're wicked. See, when the Antichrist comes on the scene, you're going to fall down, you're going to worship him, you're going to take his mark in your hand or in your forehead, and that's going to damn your soul to, he to, have, to hell forever. The gospel will have none effect for you. I'm just speaking Bible. I mean, if, if you call yourself a Christian, I'm just speaking Bible to you. You're cursing me and violating the Bible and saying that you're right with God. Well, your God is obviously not the God of the Bible. That means your God is the devil. Well, I would, I would encourage you to not harden your heart toward the gospel anymore. I would say search the scripture for yourself. Read your King James Bible for yourself. Don't believe it because I said it. I don't believe, believe it. You say. Believe it because it's written in the Bible. Have you read the Bible? Yeah. Which part? You've read the whole Bible. Have you read the King James Bible? Okay, those other modern Bibles, all the ones that have been written since the late 1800s, have come out of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, the Roman Catholic Church is leading more people to hell than any religious organization ever. Need to have a personal relationship the oh, they do. They need to be born again. They need to have the Holy Ghost living inside of them. I'm loving you. I'm warning you. If I didn't care about you, I would ignore you. If I didn't care about you, I wouldn't tell you the truth. If I didn't care about you, I would say it's okay, sweetheart. We're all a work in progress. Just do the best you can. But the Bible says to be holy. Holy, holy. This is what the Lord did. This is what the apostles did. This is what the prophets in the Old Testament did. They lifted up their voices and they were hated by the religious hypocrites. That's right. The apostles of the New Testament, Jesus Christ himself, and the prophets of the Old Testament were hated by the religious hypocrites. They said, shut up and go away. They said, you're not preaching right. Oh yes, the religious hypocrites in the Bible said, you're not preaching the word of the Lord. You're all wrong. Oh, search the scriptures yourself, people. Am I a pastor? I'm just a Bible believer. I'm just a gospel preacher. That's all I am. I'm a plain old Christian. I'm just out here as a plain old Christian preaching the plain old King James Bible. The King James Bible has been written for over 400 years. Written at something like a fifth grade level. Hey, the whole scripture has been written for you at about a fifth grade level. Are you smarter than a fifth grade? 
Yeah. Hey, if you can read in your smarter than a fifth grade level, you can read God's holy word. You can read God's holy words. That's right. God is so merciful. God is long suffering. And God is so loving for you. He has put everything he expects of you written down in black and white. Written down on paper for you in the holy, blessed King James Bible for you today. Always but he's even gone beyond that. He's even gone beyond the Bible itself. You can get a free Bible app on your phone today. You can get King James Bible app on your phone today. Hey, I got a good idea for some of you people. How about you get your porno off of your iPhone and get the holy words of God on there instead? That would be good for your soul. That would be a good start. Get the perverted pornography off your iPhone and download a good Bible app. Read it, believe it, and obey it. Praise the Lord. That would be good for your soul. That is what God expects of you today. Don't believe the words because they come out of my mouth. Believe the words that are in the Holy Scriptures of Jesus said. That's the first word from the lips of our blessed Lord when he took the stage and started his preaching ministry. The first word of Jesus Christ was to repent, repent, repent. That means turn from your wicked ways. That means turn from sin. Change your mind about sinning. That's what repent means. Start loving the things that God loves and hating the things that God hates. That's what repent means? Oh yes, you need to repent towards God. And you need to trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. His atoning work on Calvary to assuage God's anger and wrath which you accumulated over your life for your sin. Your sinful choices. You have damned your own soul. We're not out here being judgmental today. We're not out here being condemned today. It's too late. We can't condemn you today. You've already condemned yourselves. Keep your hands to yourself, sir. No, you are drunk. Oh, we're out here to tell you to return from your sin and be born again. You smell like you're drunk, sir. Oh, you need to repent from your drunkenness. You need to be born again. Oh, I used to be a wicked drunkard too. Oh, I couldn't wait for beer or 30 on the weekends. Oh, even during the week. Oh, I used to love to drink my booze. Oh, but I was born again. When I, sur when I submitted and surrendered to my Bible career, the Holy Ghost came into my heart and said, you need to stop being a filthy drunk. I said, yes, sir. Oh, yes. The Lord has purified me. The Lord has cleansed me. The Lord has given me a new heart. Oh, yes. The Bible says that you must circumcise the four skins of your heart. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says you have a hardened heart, a seared heart, and God can give you a heart of flesh. God can get rid of that heart of stone and give you a new heart, a heart of flesh, a loving heart. Oh, but when you sin, when you violate your conscience, your heart becomes hard. Oh, God gave you a wonderful gift. It's called your conscience. And the first time you violated, you felt guilty because you were. The first time you sinned, you felt condemned because you were. Oh, but you hardened your heart. God loves everybody, but all the sin-loving God-haters are going to hell. Oh, yes. God has shed His love abroad for you are the atoning power of Jesus Christ on the cross. And what have you done with it? Are you living the whole other life that God has commanded of you? God showed you His love when His Son was bleeding out on the cross. God showed His love for you when He sacrificed His only begotten Son for your rotten, wretched soul. Oh, but what are you doing in return? Are you obeying Him? Most people, they're not obeying the Lord. They just love their sin. They say, I don't care that Jesus died for me. I'm going to live my life the way. Don't show me your breast, you dirty woman. Those are for your children. Not for the public. Go to hell. Drunkards will go to hell. That's right. 
God made a way for everybody to be saved. God was so loving, He made a way for every single sinner to be born again and become a holy saint of God. But if you don't start obeying God, trusting in the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross, you are trampling the blood of Jesus Christ beneath your feet. You're trampling the blood of the Lord beneath your feet when you know about God's atoning power on the cross, when you've heard the soul-saving gospel of Jesus Christ, and you say, yeah, thanks God, but give me some more liquor. Yeah, thanks God, but I'm just going to please myself with my life. Oh, no. God's mercy and God's forgiveness is conditional. That's what the Bible says. You must meet the conditions of God. Gee, that's why Jesus said to repent. That's why Jesus said to be born again. That's why the Bible says you need to be made a new creature in Christ. Is anybody out here a new creature in Christ? Is anybody out here a born again, holy saint of God? I am. I hope so, man. Praise the Lord. There are some people out here. Are you born again? Living holy? pleasing the Lord. Yes, that's what God expects of you. It's a very simple life. You don't have to forge your own path. You don't have to become the captain of your soul. What a joke. Oh no. You can submit and surrender to the Lord your God on high. Submit to Him. Surrender to Him. Lord, the Lord your God. Praise the Lord. Alright, so it's uh, what the fuck is quarter to seven. We think we go to 7.30? Before it really starts getting get down here? Yeah. How, how much longer do you guys want to go? I would say 7.30 is the latest. Where are all centers, man? Chicago. I'm not a center. I'm not a center. I used to be a center. I'm pretty sure I don't center anymore. I choose not to sin. And so can you. That's good news. There's good news, people. You don't have to sin. Nobody has to sin. Nobody has to go to hell. Uh, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but in the end, it leads to hell. Hell fire. The Bible says that the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. This nation has forgotten God. This nation has got a proud fist at God right now. And there's a target. There's a target on America right now. I tell you right now, the thing that I care the most for this country is the terror that God is going to bring upon America. Oh, we preach because we know about the terror God. The Bible says that he's an awful God of awful wrath. That the wrath of God abides upon those that remain in disobedience. Time to get right with the God of the Bible. Time to turn from your sin or you're going to be turned into hell. Jesus Christ told me to come out here tonight and judge you, Nashville.
Because when I was 18, I was a Catholic. God so 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 I was excited to go to a church. You saw it. God. You love your sin and you hate God. You love your drunkenness and your love. Because I was invited. He didn't hit me over the head with a sign. I agree. Yes. Yes. I agree. I agree with all that. But to me, I was telling these guys. If somebody's a new Christian or doesn't know a God, these people are not up. kidding me. This is they horrible to, to see that. That's, that's, that's terrible. The way yeah, I'm judging for God. What if we brought him into church first and said, listen, this is wrong. You're not supposed to judge. You can tell me what you are. Because I am not you. And I don't disagree. You know, Jesus preached that out loud. I don't disagree with this. Jesus preached that out loud to everybody. Varsity level, as you call it, he preached it to the crowd, just like we are here. The Apostle Paul preached at the Corinthian church. They were baby Christians. Okay. 
so this is all. not above their head. I just look at what I see. And I have three or four people during this process to go to church. I have to comply. I have to comply. Because I like it too. I don't like this stuff. I don't like this stuff. That's why you can't judge hypocrites. That's why you can't judge. I say I'm not for not having to comply. I'm not going to lay over. I'm not down here. I need my action. My point is the best. I have a right to judge. I'm told to judge. Go to church. I'm told to judge. I'm told to judge. I'm told to judge. No, it doesn't. It says, two or three gather in my name, there I will be. That's the Catholics, right? The Catholics that they live in these churches. That's a fact. But I people that want to come to you guys. And I ask questions. What does that mean? I'm a saint. I'm a saint. You're not even wrong. That's the prayer of it. You're not even wrong. It's just that it's not. I have conversations with people all the time. Why do you guys say just now? Talk to those girls. Why do you guys say just now? Why do you guys say just now? Stand back. Stand clear. Stand clear. Stand clear. I'm out here to love you. I'm out here to love your soul. I'm out here because I care about you. You're going to hell. That's right. I don't want you to go to hell. I guess it is. It's a warning. He's fucking telling us we're all going to hell. We all deserve it. Jesus Christ. But him telling us we're going to hell. Don't go to hell. Oh, that's the that's the message. Repent from your sin. We don't want any of you to go to hell. We're out here because we love you. Liars and thieves will go to hell. Homosexuals will go to hell. But not everybody's going to go to hell because my friends and I are not going to hell. I don't even think is going to hell. I don't even think going to hell. Let's not sing this. Oh, what's going on? What's hey. going on? Assaults here on Broadway. Oh yes, we have people assaulted here on Broadway tonight. We're out here to love our neighbors. We're out here to talk to people. No, we're not out here for assaults. We're out here for love. We're out here to to talk to people. He doesn't owe me anything. He broke my thing, but he doesn't owe me anything. He hasn't sinned against me. He sinned against God. Just like everybody else. You, you can't sin against us. You sinned against God. You can kill me and I will go to heaven. That will be the best thing that will ever happen to me. Don't judge other people. We are just obeying the Lord tonight. We are just obeying our Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Stop. People sharing the gospel. This a long time ago. Listen, I'm not hating on you. Don't tell their people they're going to hell. If you want to give them fucking truth, tell them the love. Don't tell them they're going to fucking die and go to hell. Listen, it's the truth. If they do die, yes, they're going to hell. You're right. But listen. There's a different way to fucking do it, man. There's a different way to fucking do it. Have we ever came out yeah. and done this? Should we all go to hell? Yeah, I would. We were having a, a conversation. Justin was right. Listen, I was not intimidated. I just watched it. I just, dude, I was talking about Jesus Christ. Listen to him. Just listen to him. 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 Listen Come on. Come on. He pushed me up on the stool. Oh, no, grow up. What the fuck? I thought you were all about forgiving. You are about forgiving. He is forgiving. Forgiveness does not mean lawlessness. You won't do anything you don't like because you're stupid. Bro, Forgiveness does not mean, mean lawlessness. Listen, no one else comes to you saying, hey, believe this, believe that, go to hell, suck a dick, get playing traffic, I don't care what you do, get the fuck out of everybody's head. We're just out here trying to save your soul. What? what are you doing? Just talking to people, sharing ideas. Go to hell! Go to hell! Does that mean 
don't. We're saying, we're saying don't. Come on, dude. Everyone's gonna go to hell. You're trying to save people. We're just preaching the Bible. We're just preaching Bible verses. The ideas of the Bible. That's all. Take the law and take and take personality. Take psychology. Does psychology really go along with fucking the Bible? No, it doesn't. Of course not, because those are men's ideas. You need a different way of approaching, and you can do it. We're out here sharing God's ideas, not man's ideas. We're just preaching the Bible. Do it That's all. They understand. The way they understand. They don't understand. That's between them and God. I don't know. It's between them and God. They're not going to understand it that way. They're not. Well, you know, we're just doing what Jesus said. The Bible says that the word of God will not return to him void. Okay, but how long will without accomplishing what he sent it out for? Look at how everything's changed. Say it the way they understand. You guys remember me? We're saying it the way that Jesus say said to say it. We're just following the examples of the Bible. Praise the Lord. Say it the way they understand. They will understand. Change it a little bit, they will understand. Hey, the Bible's written at like a fifth grade level. You know that? Yes. The contradictions are fifth grade level. Name a contradiction. Now's a good time to take the banners down. Name a contradiction. Name a contradiction? In the Bible, yeah. He's, he said there's contradictions. Oh, there's contradictions. Yeah. Okay, go kill your son. You got a son? What's go that? Go kill him. You got a son? Where's that in the Bible? Do you have a son? Do I have a son? Yeah. Go kill him. Why would I do that? Oh, in the Old the Testament. The Bible forbids murder. Bible. Oh, but in the Old Testament, God questioned someone to go kill his son. Do you know who that was? Right before he Do you remember it. who that was? Yeah, I bet you do. Do you know? It was Abraham. Okay. And did, did he kill his son? Do you know his son's name? Isaiah. No. <laughs> Isaac. Isaiah is my it, favorite it, fucking yeah. testimony in the Bible. It was Isaac. The name Isaac means laughter. God told him to kill him, and he put him on the altar, and he raised his knife to kill him, and God stopped him. And why would he do and that? gave him a life. Why would he do that? Because he was painting a, uh, a, a picture of Jesus Christ, how he was oh, going to was sacrifice his own son. Jesus yep. Christ, so to kill his own son. So praise the Lord. Wait, God. Hey, you know what? I believe in God, but you guys are fucking so worse. on YouTube. Sir, the officer had told you to back away. Yeah, please listen to the officer. Why don't you get the fuck down the road? It's You're harassing the people here. Look at the fuck out of here. You're a fucking idiot. What you guys do? You guys should be ashamed of yourself. Maybe you should really look into this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, my family's gonna work out. Go ahead, brother. They just shut me down over the ice of fucking people. No, like, no worries, I had it. Huh? You got any songs to praise the Lord tonight? Can I give you one of these? Hey, this this is just like in the Bible, right? This is just like the Bible where all they're all persecuted. We, we know what it's all about. We, it's our first I just want Jesus, you know. A lot of our friends are down in uh, Louisiana right now. You know what they're doing? You talk about the Valley of the Beast. This place called Southern Decadence. You know what that is? I travel for a living. I, That's a lot worse than this. 110 countries in every state. So I've been all these places. This is the on the news. I've tried. Did you see where those guys? Just be are? safe. This shit gets out of hand, and you are. I don't. You don't need to, that. And honest question: Why do you, you guys come here to do this? Because we love you. I love you. We want we want the best for you. Can I give you a gospel track? Can you take one? I'm good. Here's the thing. 
I believe in God. I love God. God does. But God, the one thing God says is He doesn't judge. Why do you, you guys are judging the people that are doing this? We're just doing so, the best we can. You're not doing the best you can because God doesn't judge. You guys are judging the people that live this life. They're provokers. Why do Why do you provoke this life? Or why do you do people. this? Wait, God specifically God says He does not special. judge. You guys are yeah. judging us. So, so why are you so close? Same shit. Close to what? I was responding to that guy. I don't want to respond to him because you couldn't respond to me. You can't answer my question. No, I'm not. Okay. These guys are asking. Well, the things you're saying aren't true. What? What is it? So, so you're telling me God does judge? He's got a whole day called judgment day. No, you're wrong. God does not judge. God accepts. God accepts. Well, that's what the Antichrist is going to do when he comes to rule the world. The God of the Bible. Hey, bring, bring him on. Bring him on. Because guess what? Guess what? Well, he'll, he'll come back. He's coming back. The truth of the matter is, when you die, you die. That's it. You die. We live spiritually through God. God is, God is a graceful Savior. But that's true. So, so, if you believe that, if you believe that, why would you be angry at us? I'm not angry at anybody. Are you a fly fisherman? You guys are angry What's at that? me. I love fly fishing. You a fly fisherman? Yeah. Here's the thing, my I like to eat fish. Here's the thing. I, I, like I have no problem with eating fish. Let's do that. I've been, I've been. Because, because we're gonna leave now. Uh, you guys, if you want to talk right, with us? You can email us if you want. Oh, and I'll you. No, I'll email you. My only, my only, my only thing is like. God doesn't judge. You guys act like he does. That's the only reason I'm talking. Okay, well, we'll keep reading the Bible. We're gonna keep reading the Bible. No, I've read the fucking Bible. Okay.